The most dramatic moment of the Miami Dolphins season came a week ago at the Orange Bowl with 49 seconds to play. Dan Marino against a full New York Jet blitz lets her rip. Mark Duper beats the coverage and goes in. A game-winning touchdown, and with the play, the Dolphins came from behind, got off the ropes, and are right back in the chase in the AFC East. As today, they come to Indianapolis. Good afternoon, everyone, from the Hoosier Dome in Indianapolis, where playing conditions are always perfect. Don Cricky along with Bob Trumpy. The boom is back in the Miami offense with the return of Mark Duper, a wide receiver. Dan Marino, the engine in the offense, says you can't but believe what Mark Duper means to this team. Well, he was out for seven weeks with that broken uh, bone in his leg. Mark Clayton had not caught a touchdown pass in seven weeks. Last week, he caught one. Eight catches, 217 yards, and Don, today, he didn't have to catch eight passes for 217 yards. All he's got to do is line up. It scares defenses to death. While the Colts haven't beaten the Dolphins in 10 tries, Rod Dahar, the coach of Indianapolis, says we have to look on this as an opportunity for a young team to show they can do. And, Don, it's got to be an early opportunity. They have the muscle, I believe, to compete with the Miami Dolphins. If they give it to McMillan, get good running yardage, they got a chance to stay close to the Miami Dolphins towards the end of the game and then finally turn it around. That's all they want, a chance late in the game to win. They've got to stay close, and turnovers have hurt Indianapolis badly in the last two weeks. In the first eight games of the season, Trump, they only fumbled the ball away four times total. But they fumbled it away three times in each of the last two games, and that's been the difference. As Dahauer said, we've, our playing level has come up, but we've knocked ourselves out of games with turnovers. Tell you another difference, too. The uh, Colts, in the first eight games, allowed 11 sacks, and in the last two, they've allowed 14, and that certainly hurt the Colts' chances, too. Right now, Raul Alegre is ready to kick the ball off for Indianapolis. Back deep now for the Dolphins is Lorenzo Hampton, the rookie from Florida. Takes it across the 10. Good channel of blockers, and Lorenzo is out to the 25-yard line. Hampton with a 22-yard return. And now the superpower Miami Dolphin offense come out with the best quarterback in football of a season ago, rounding perhaps into that form again, Dan Marino at QB. Tony Nathan and Woody Bennett as starting runners. Duper and Clayton, the super fast wide receivers. Mark Clayton's from Indianapolis and has always played well when he's come back here for any reason. Bruce Hardy opens at tight end. White Stevenson, one of the best centers in football. Indianapolis has another of the best in Ray Donaldson. Miami has the lowest sack total allowed in the league. Only gotten to Marino 10 times, only 11 sacks in total given up by the Dolphins. Flip, Marino gets it away. The ball is lost at the 28-yard line. Nesby Glasgow came early, the strong safety. Harry Krause put the hit on that freed the ball, so it'll be second down and 10. Defensive front of the Indianapolis Colts, Danelle Thompson, a former number one out of North Carolina, playing well at defensive left end. White is a top tackler. Chris Scott coming on. They're young, but they're good. The strength of this team is the linebackers. Three of them very high number one draft choices, Cooks, Krause, and Bickett. Cliff Odom plays like a high number one. He's the number one tackler. Some Preston's in the secondary, though, and Moreno will be looking at Preston Davis. He did at least in the first meeting at the Orange Bowl. And the ball is Lorenzo Hampton, the rookie, getting in on that play, and he is knocked down at the line of scrimmage. Wayne Bickett, who they really like, out of Southern California, number one draft choice of Indianapolis, getting better week by week, and he's big. 6'5", 245, made the stop. So now it'll be shotgun offense for Miami. Notice a change in the Miami starting offense. It looks like they have Ronnie Lee in the offensive lineup and Cleveland Green at the tackles. Easler still gippy with that arthroscopic knee. Dan Marino's number is quite a bit different than a year ago, but now he has his two weapons back on the flank. Dan Marino with time guns the ball. It's almost intercepted. Going to Mark Clayton. But Leonard Coleman, one of those six defensive backs, the number one draft choice out of Vanderbilt, made a play on the ball, went originally to the U.S. Football League. So the crowd, very supportive of the Colts when they were rolling, as they did in that first defensive series, is a defensive standing salute. Reggie Roby. You might be able to hit it off the roof of the Hoosier Dome. And there's Robbie Martin back deep now for Indianapolis. Standing at his 30. Colts could get good field position here. Miami has defeated the Indianapolis Colts the last 10 times they've played. Getting back to Baltimore. As Roby crashes a long ball downfield. Martin all the way back to his 17 or 18-yard line. He's clever. 
Bobby Martin after that huge punt of 57 yards ran it back 16. So the Colts go on offense for the first time with Mike Tegel out of Arizona State starting at quarterback. They change pitchers here in Indianapolis. We could see Matt Kofler come in. Randy McMillan and George Wansley are a couple of good runners. The wide receivers Raymond Butler and Wayne Capers. Pat Beach is strong at tight end, can catch it, and he blocks. Chris Hinton is a top offensive lineman, the left tackle out of Northwestern, the number one. Ray Donaldson, a Pro Bowl quality center. No score, and it's first and ten for the Colts. Their first possession. George Wansley gets a big block from Hinton. And Wansley busts it out to the 49-yard line. Glenn Blackwood. The strong safety came up and made the play, but it was a 15-yard gain keyed by Chris Hinton. If there is a weakness of this Miami Dolphin defense, it's their rush yardage against almost 150 yards a game. And you're right. Chris Hinton did an excellent job along with that pulling to the weak side of that formation. Good pickup of 15 yards. So the Colts look sharp at least early. It is first down and 10 now for Indianapolis at their 49-yard line. Two wide receivers set to the left. Wansley and McMillan are the runners. Mike Hagel against the big rush. Loses the ball. We'll see if it's a free ball or an incomplete pass. They're going to rule it incomplete. Arm was in forward progress. Pat Haggerty, the referee, stepping in. So it'll bring up second down and 10 from the 49. Hagel's a very good athlete, as you know, Trump. Played on an NCAA basketball or baseball championship team at Arizona State. He can run as you look at the front line of Miami. Mac Moore starts at defensive end. Jay Brophy in for Jackie Ship at linebacker. Hugh Green starting to come on. A former All-Pro from Tampa Bay. Secondary. Not a lot of great athletes, but a lot of very smart players always in sync. It's second down and ten as Pagel sprints out. Looking deep, comes the ball to a wide-open receiver, Raymond Butler, from Southern California, and he's down to the 28-yard line as the Colts hit a big one, a 23-yard gain and a first down. Rolled out by Mike Pagel, well executed. Jay Brophy finally on the tackle, and you would expect the Indianapolis Colts to come in here and just run the ball at Miami. They choose to throw it. Watch the play fake here. It's not a great play fake, but it's not a... You see the guard pull out there. That's just enough to influence those linebackers. So it pulls. It holds the linebackers at the line of scrimmage. He fakes downfield. Butler is wide open. And I'm telling you, Bagel put something on that one. So the fastball and Raymond Butler, who's been averaging 18 yards a catch, makes his 19th reception of this season. They go right to the line. Randy McMillan. Power back out of the University of Pittsburgh, where he was a number one draft choice of the then Baltimore Colts five years ago. Runs it ahead. He's been averaging four yards even a carry. The Colts are one of the best rushing teams in the NFL. In fact, they're tied with the Jets right now for the best rushing yardage average, 4.5 a pop. Don, and I'll tell you, they'll run behind the left side of the offensive line. That's Ut and Hinton. About two to one in every single game that they play. Good point. Most teams are right-handed in running. They go to the left a lot of times because of the great blockers on that side. They go left this time, and there is Bonsley. Head down, two arms on the ball. He's down to the 19-yard line. They'll be just short of a first down, depending on where they spot it. It'll be very close on the play for the Miami Dolphins. Was Kim Bocamper. Two carries, 20 yards for Wansley. They are running right at Bo Camper and the side of Hugh Green. And the two people the Colts have there are probably their best blocking offensive linemen. Van Ott, Chris Hinton, lineman. Van Ott, Chris Hinton, we're going to see that lead play to the left side of that Colt offense all day long. We have 10.55 to play in the first quarter. Dolphins were stopped in their first possession. Now the Colts are driving on their first. Here's Wansley. Going hard at the Dolphins as they take it inside the 15-yard line. It's a first down for Indianapolis. Oaks looking strong. Last week against the Jets, Miami gave up over 490 yards offense, but only 17 points. Opening drive of the ball game for each team against any opponent. Certainly the most important drive of the game because you establish control of the line of scrimmage. And in the first drive by the Miami Dolphins, they got absolutely nothing and on the first drive by the Indianapolis Colts, very impressive, putting a bow in that defensive line. Miami tough to score on. They've given up only 17 points in the first quarter total all season. Here's a throw, and this could go in. Oh, the ball. Andy McMillan had it in an open track as the coverage.
Rodgers was deep in the end zone against Raymond Butler. The zone was dropped back. But McMillan, you see, could not hold on. So it'll be second down and 10 from the 18. Bob Brzezinski was the linebacker who should have had coverage on McMillan. The thing I liked about Pago there, Don, you saw him look all the way to the left side of the field, then come all the way back to the right side of the field for the open receiver. That ball should have been caught. But it wasn't, so it's second down and 10 coming up. Colts in field goal range already on their opening drive. First time they've had the ball. Nothing, nothing with 10.06 to play in the first quarter. Wansley as they go left again, and he again turns the corner on the Dolphin defense down close to the 10-yard line. Got about three. Hugh Green, an outside linebacker. You don't turn the corner on him much. True, and he's... Uh, He's one of the real students for Chuck Studley. Anytime a linebacker or a player comes in in the middle of the season and you try to adjust to the defense that they're playing, it is a very difficult transition. And I noticed that time the Miami Dolphins, there's Chuck Studley on the sideline, defensive coordinator. That time the defensive line of the Miami Dolphins, they slanted to Bo Camper's side. Mike Charles, the nose tackle, they figured they were going to run left. That's the ninth play of this drive for the Indianapolis Colts. No score. Wayne Capers is on the right flank. Lee Rogers is in the game. Third down. Tip ball, and it's incomplete at the five-yard line. Oliver Williams from Illinois making the play on the ball. Hugh Green in good coverage for the Dolphins. From the shotgun, you look at the nose tackle. Little, Barnett there. They go just can't quite get the ball over. Mac Moore of the Miami Dolphins, and there's still almost a completion, so Allegre comes on to make more money. He is the only field goal kicker in the game, paid by the kick. 3,000 a field goal, 500 an extra point. He's making money this year, too. Good kicker from the University of Texas. 28-yard attempt. And he drills it. So Raul Allegre fires a fist into the air. Three foul goes in his hip pocket and three goes on the board for the Colts. Raul Allegre, as you see now, the all third all-time leading scorer in Colt history, just passed uh, Jim O'Brien. A name perhaps forgotten, but certainly a significant one in Colt history. He kicked the field goal that beat Dallas for a Super Bowl championship. And another trivia John question. Was the Colts. Another big trivia question in that Super Bowl. I'll give it to you, see if you get the answer. Right now, we're going to get a kickoff from Raul Allegre. Just hit a 28-yard field goal. Lorenzo Hampton. Good special teams play by Indianapolis. Colts make the knockdown. They think they have the ball. Mitchell says no. An 18-yard return by Hampton. Dave Aaron, the linebacker, was down to make the play on special teams. One of the most remarkable things about Dan Marino coming out, all he's achieved, MVP in the NFL, Rookie of the year. He started in the Pro Bowl as a rookie quarterback. Only rookie quarterback to do that. He's only 24 years old right now. And was passed over by an awful lot of people. There are a lot of general managers looking bad every time Marino throws a touchdown. John Sula says he was good from the day he first showed up. Outstanding from the first practice. So the experts were wrong, and Marino keeps proving it game after game. Now with his team down 3-0, he hands off to Davenport. Ron Davenport, a rookie runner, goes into another rookie, Dwayne Bickett, for not very much yardage. Don, so far, pretty obvious that the Indianapolis Colts are up to it. They have uh, got a snoot full here, the Miami Dolphins. They're going to play with as much emotion as they possibly can, the Indiana Indianapolis Colts. And Bickett made a couple of big plays already defensively for these young Colts. They really like Bickett here in Indianapolis. The coaches say he's going to be an all-pro player. Big as a defensive end, and he can run. On second and eight, Marino with a sprint out. He makes it happen fast, but Mark Clayton can't hold on along the near sideline. Preston Davis, who was victimized often at the Orange Bowl in the first meeting this season by Miami, makes the play on defense, and now Marino's put it up three times and has not hit one yet. Yeah, Duper hasn't helped a bit so far. It appears the Indianapolis Colts very tight coverage and not allowing that eight or nine yard cushion that uh, Miami likes just to throw the little hitches. Marino trying to check defenses there, see who's in the game if it's the nickel package. Colts are looking to see a lot of footballs in the air. 
Marino threw 48 times against them in the first meeting, won by Miami, 30 to 13 at the Orange Bowl. Six defensive backs in the game for Indianapolis as Dan Marino stands at his 16 for the shotgun snap. Got a man, but he's low to Nat Moore. The wily veteran Nat Moore was right where he had to be to get the first down, but as you saw against pressure, the throw came in low and incomplete. Keith Lee on the coverage. The Colts came with a five-man rush at six defensive backs in coverage, and you're right. Moore runs a good pattern. He's got enough for the first down. The ball just thrown low. So now Reggie Roby's back in for the Dolphins. Hit his first punt, 57 yards. Bobby Martin is the deep man. Back now for the Colts, standing at his 32. He returned the first, you'll remember, 16 yards. And the Colts subsequently then down the field and kicked a 28-yard field goal to take a 3-0 lead. Roby, two-time NCAA punting leader at Iowa, and loads another. Here comes Martino. Channels open. Look at this guy run. Roby with a play on him, and he eludes him. Robbie Martin's going to take it the distance. No flag. A 70-yard punt return for a touchdown. First punt return for a touchdown in this season. This is excellent blocking by the entire Colt team. And then the move on Reggie Roby is sensational. Roby's not a very mobile kicker, one of the world's biggest. A 70-yard return. Colts are something else today. Boy, oh, they're looking sharp. Allegre hits the point after that. 500 for Raul. He's made 3,500 today. And most importantly for Indianapolis, they have a 10 nothing lead. And when they score a touchdown in the first quarter, they're tough. Yeah. In every game they've won this season, the Colts have scored a touchdown in the first quarter. Did not come to Indianapolis expecting this. A 10 nothing Colt lead in the first quarter. Shula, of course, at age 33. The youngest head coach in NFL history when he was appointed the head man of the then Baltimore Colts. Now in his 16th year at Miami. Don, I think he's still the only guy to ever be compensated for by a first-round draft choice. Right. And when he went to uh, Miami, uh, the Colts got a first-round pick, and he turned out to be Don McCauley out of North Carolina, who was a very valuable player for a number of years. Rod Dahauer? Rod Dahauer, the head coach of Indianapolis, told his young team, and they are very young, you look at this game as an opportunity to play the best team maybe in football. They surely were in the American Conference a year ago, the Dolphins. And the Dolphins' confidence level was very high coming in. And, of course, the veteran team, consummate professionals, they could be down even more than 10 nothing. They'll be back in this game. Yeah, at 70 yards on a punt return to that total. And the initial stages of this football game, obviously, very much against the Miami Dolphins. Sure, that Marino has not completed a pass. Needing some wins so badly. Dan Henning under fire there out in front of the L.A. Rams, 3-0. Don Shula, Dolphins, a surprise 10-0 trailer in this game. Raul Allegre has been working that right leg a lot. He kicks off again and once again for a third time. Lorenzo Hampton brings the ball back to Miami. Colts right in position on special teams. Cornerback Eugene Daniel on special teams coverage makes the knockdown after a 19-yard return. Byron Dan Marino, the engine in the offense, comes back out. Not so many times this season, I've mentioned to you that special teams and the defense establishes the emotion in the football game. Indianapolis right now sky high. One nice thing about the Colts, they're young. They're three and seven right now. They don't quit, though. Things don't go their way. They do make mistakes or have, as young teams will, but they'll fight right down to the final gun no matter what the score. And you have to like that and what it pretends for the future. It's now first down and 10 for the Miami Dolphins, who trail 10 0 with 8.28 to play in the first quarter. Right, Miami's behind 10 0 if he just joined it. And that's Dan Marino being sacked for only the 11th time this season. And only the 12th sack offseason against the Dolphins. Rock has been sacked once. 
Interesting defense employed by the Colts that time. Look at the nose tackle. See him? He's way off the line of scrimmage. Hunnell Thompson gets in there. Whoa, that's almost a very expensive sack. See the nose tackle off the middle? 92 for the Indianapolis Colts. White comes around on the, the game, but it's Donnell Thompson up the middle, and Cleveland Green gets bent back. And he's having and, a problem on the field. And I'll, tell you, and I'll tell you, a real problem for the Miami Dolphins for the rest of the season, Don, they have used all of their free moves. So many injuries that if anyone gets seriously hurt and they got to put him on the injured reserve list, they can't bring anyone on that list off. they got some good players there that they'd like to activate, and they can't. And uh, Green already replacing Giesler. So now what does Miami do? Pro Bowl guard Ed Newman's been on the shelf all year with a knee injury and will be out the entire season with 824 to play in the first quarter. We'll take a look at how Cleveland Green is actually pinned from behind. Strangely in the last number of years Don, I think we've seen this a lot. Uh, people making a tackle on somebody else and they roll up the leg of an offensive lineman. I can think of a couple of instances where a player has gotten seriously injured. He's on white. Donnell Thompson hits him. Bends his ankle and knee back. And... Whoa. Donnell Thompson did some damage on that play. Sacked the quarterback and inadvertently sent Cleveland Green out of the game. Now it's second down and about 16. Dan Reno swings it out. Joe Carter from Alabama runs the ball, but not very far. He gets it out to the 15-yard line. Cliff Odom made the knockdown. Scoreboard starting to show some numbers. The Tampa Bay Buccaneers, a team that gave the Giants fits at Giant Stadium, is doing the same to the Jets in the first quarter. As Cleveland Green is attended to. Tampa Bay out in front of the Steve DeBerg to Kevin House touchdown pass from 39 yards out. Don Cleveland Green is being replaced by Jeff Dallenbach. 6'6", 280-pound rookie from Wisconsin now playing left tackle. That's the emergency room tackle, the backside of Dan Marino. He's got to do his job. Marino, under the gun, or out in front by 21, is always confident and always ready to hit the big play. Now he takes too long getting ready. It looks like a delay of game is going to be signaled in the end. Well, Miami is flat. Nothing's going right. That time, the Colts had seven guys at the line of scrimmage. Fewest penalties in the NFL last week, they had 10, which is uh, their high for the 1985 season. So Coach Hula waiting for his offense to get up to speed. It hasn't been so far with 7.19 to play in the first quarter. The Indianapolis Colts, a touchdown underdog, according to the local papers, is a 10-0 leader. Marino just one for four for only four yards throwing the ball. The crowd's been a factor. The 12th man has been loud here at the Hoosier Dome, supporting this defense that has played so well. Lorenzo Hampton is run down from behind. Chris Scott, who played collegiately at nearby West Lafayette at Purdue University, ran him down, and so the Dolphins can't move it again. Controlling the line of scrimmage is the simplest way to look at this. You see Scott coming inside the block of the offensive tackle to make the tackle in the backfield. The Dolphins actually lost yardage. This is all Colts so far. Well, you wouldn't want to stand on one foot waiting for another touchdown to be returned and a punt against the Dolphins. That doesn't happen very often, but it did the last time. Reggie Roby booted one, and Robbie Martin ready back again. Ran it back 70 yards. Martin at his 45. The Dolphins come hunting him and get him, but again, the Indianapolis Colts have good field position after a 12-yard return by Robbie Martin having a big day. So the Colts go on offense. First and 10, and they lead the ball game by a surprising 10-0 first quarter score. Room and the Dolphins shut it down. Low Camper came up to make the play. It'll bring up second down and long, no game. You can see the adjustment now. The Dolphins' defense is trying to uh, make a little bit. So many teams lately are trying to emulate that Chicago Bear defense. That time, all three defensive linemen sunk down inside. Uh, linebackers on tight ends. That time they stopped that draw play by the Indianapolis Colts. Let's see if they do it again. Wow. Bob Rodzinski. Jay Brophy, Mark Brown, Hugh Green back the line for the Dolphins. 
with a blitz. It's picked up. Brophy was coming. Oh, the Dolphins with a clean play on the ball. They were looking at Raymond Butler. Tegel was. But Brown had an open play on the ball. The free safety, but he couldn't get it. He was surprised. Went right behind Raymond Butler. And, of course, the defensive back, he did the right thing. He's supposed to be watching the receiver, Don, and he's not really watching the quarterback. And when he sees it thrown, then all of a sudden, bang, it's to him. He really couldn't get to it quickly. You can't really fault Bud Brown in that situation. He did the right thing. Now it brings up third down for the Colts. Ball position at their 47-yard line. Mike Tegel from the shotgun. Then three people deep get some time. Rose Howard is intercepted by Miami. Looks like it's a clean interception. It is. Dolphins get the ball. Glenn Blackwood came up on it. I think they'll credit him with the interception. And Pagel is slow getting up. He yeah. was hit when he released the ball. He looks hurt. That time, ball should not have been thrown. You can see all four guys backing up. Blackwood's the guy at the 35-yard line. There is double coverage inside and out. That's, a, that's the first mistake, really, that Pagel has made. Looks like he hurt his thumb. He may have hit his thumb on someone's helmet. So the Dolphins get a big play from Glenn Blackwood. They get the ball now trailing 10 to nothing. First quarter, 439 to play in it. Reno, two nice fakes, swings it out, and again he's off target. Woody Green or Woody Bennett coming out of the backfield and hold the ball at the 46-yard line. I'll tell you, the uh, Miami Dolphins, uh, there's Pagel trying to throw the ball on the sideline. Tampa now over the Jets, 14 to nothing. Hey, they're tough. DeBerg now with 20 touchdown passes for the season. I think he leads the NFL. Yeah, point on the Miami Dolphins. They don't like playing on AstroTurf. At least they don't in 1985. They've uh, lost all their games on AstroTurf. They have lost all four. They're six and four coming in. They start the day one game behind New England, one game behind the Jets. Jets trailing 14-0. Patriots go later at Seattle. Dan Marino on second and 10. Tony Nathan takes the ball with his 49th reception of the season. Wayne Bickett knocked him down, but the Dolphins get ahead now, and they'll bring up third down and five. Nothing open deep for Miami yet. Dan Marino's had to throw the ball underneath the coverage on every single attempt. Rod Dowhar before the game, Trump was saying that the big problem with Marino, among the others, is that when somebody's open for a split second, the ball is there. He makes it happen faster than any quarterback in the game. Yeah, he holds the ball longer than 95% of the quarterbacks in the NFL. Dolphins with third down and five. There's a good throw, and Nat Moore comes off the flank, turning out on the corner. He's out to the 35-yard line of Indianapolis. A 16-yard gain, and now the Dolphins mount their first drive of the day. Keith Lee once again in coverage, almost the same pattern they ran earlier that uh, Dan Reno underthrew Nat Moore. He is certainly the elder statesman on this football team, and now there's a semblance of life for the Miami Dolphins. Nat having a good season in his 12th year from Florida, and who's played his whole pro career in his native city of Miami. That was his 36th reception of the season, and now Nat Moore on the 16-yard play has a first down for the Dolphins, and here they come on the run as Davenport, the big back from Louisville, a surprise. Wasn't that high a draft choice, Ron Davenport, but he's played well. On that first down by the Miami Dolphins, their first first down of the ball game. There'll be more, though. We're early. 3.28 to play in the first quarter, Indianapolis. Scoring on a field goal after the opening drive when the Colts first got the ball after stopping Miami. And the big play of this game, a 70-yard punt return for a touchdown by Robbie Martin of the Colts, and it made it 10-0. Indianapolis in the lead. Hampton. Some trickery by Dan Marino. Looked like he was going to play fake and go back and throw, but he did give it to Hampton. But Cliff Odom, the leading tackler inside linebacker for Indianapolis, stuck him and knocked him down. Philadelphia up 14-0 over faltering St. Louis. Schizophrenic St. Louis. Six defensive backs in the game now for Indianapolis on third down and four for Miami. Dolphins trailing 10-0 in the first quarter. 
Marino with a throw down the field. It's almost intercepted. Tate Randall had his hands on the ball, but as you saw, his own man knocked it away from him. Anthony Young, the free safety, crashed into him. Randall, an extra DB, who was a starter at free safety, lost the ball when he was hit. Joe Rose, the tight end, was the intended receiver. You got five guys rushing the quarterback. Double rotation zone. Corners up, safeties out. And double coverage on the tight end. You can do that with six defensive backs, and that ball was certainly forced by Dan Marino. Last year, he seemed to get away with that every single time. This year, not so lucky. Ravais having a great rookie season for the Dolphins. He's 15 for 15 on field goals. His only misses have been outside the 50. 15 for 50 out inside the 50. And here he drills a 46-yarder. And Ravais, who could be headed to the Pro Bowl as a rookie, drills it up and through. 16 out of 16 field goals have been good by Ravais, the rookie from Tennessee, inside the 50. And the Dolphins are on the board, trailing 10-3. Looks Trump like Matt Kopler is getting set to come in. Now, Bagel hit his thumb on a shoulder pad of the Miami Dolphins on that the last time the Colts had the ball. And Kopler's a young man that a lot of people here in Indianapolis would like to see on a more regular basis. And he can throw the ball with good authority down the field, but I think Pagel's going to try, and we'll show you how he injured his thumb after this kickoff. One of the dangers of being an NFL quarterback, or a quarterback in Little League, for that matter of fact. Mike Pagel not having a real good day, but that one 23-yard completion, as you remember, early in the game on the opening drive by Indianapolis, set up the field goal, and now Ravez hits it high. Not too deep for the Miami Dolphins. Albert Bentley, a former Miami Hurricane, runs it back for the Colts. And takes it across the 25-yard line and out to the 28. Albert Bentley, who played on that national championship team for Howard Schnellenberger, runs it back 23 yards. Now watch the way Pagel gets hurt. Mac Moore, number one, 91, right in his face, and watch Pagel follow through. Boom. You see his hand turns over. All quarterbacks' hand turns over like a pitcher throws a screwball, and his thumb went right into the shoulder pads of Mac Moore. And to the dismay of a lot of Indianapolis Colt fans, Pagel back in the huddle. Mike Pagel set to go. One for six for 23 yards to set up the opening score of the game, which was a 28-yard field goal. It's 10-3 Indianapolis right now, late in the first quarter. Raymond Butler going in motion. Curtis Dickey, who hasn't done much for Indianapolis this season, a former number one out of Texas A&M. One of the fastest runners in the world when he was a collegian. He's only run three times this season. That was his fourth and for only 11 yards. Mike Charles on the tackle, and Curtis Dickey didn't look very fast there. He looked very, very slow. The Jets get on the board. Steelers continue to lead Houston 3-0 in the second quarter. Jets trailing the Tampa Bay Buccaneers 14-7. This uh, Curtis Dickey is a strange one. That with his athletic ability for a little amount he's played, even with an injury early in the season, is very weird. Playing. Now Dickey swings out of the backfield. Pagel takes a look. He's got to hurry. He who hesitates. Down goes Mike Pagel under the rush of outside linebacker Bob Brzezinski. This is a one-man blitz by Brzezinski. Makes it a four-man rush. Good coverage by Miami down the field. Pagel just has nowhere to throw the ball. Probably a good choice on his part as opposed to trying to pump it up there and Turn up an interception. Sacks have been a problem for the Colts the last couple of games. Yeah, no question about it. 14 times in the last two games, and now a 15th time today. Third down and almost 15. Formation the Colts have not shown today, using the spin out abilities of Mike Pagel. Butler hands in, lets her rip. Incomplete at the 43 yard line of the Colts. Pagel very quick of foot. He's averaging over seven yards a run. Conversely, Dan Marino of Miami's run 11 times this season for minus nine yards. Yeah, Dan is not a runner. Langford with coverage there on Butler. That was an excellent uh, coverage job by Paul Langford. Now, here's another great kicker right here. We saw Roby. Now, this Stark kid is just unbelievable. Tommy Vigorito ready to run it back. Stark is the leading putter in the NFL for distance, but he's not that high when it's net yardage. He kicks long, low spirals that come back in Indianapolis. Great to see Tommy Vigorito playing again. He I came agree. off major knee surgery and is back in great form. The 
Cummins showing 10 guys up there rushing the punter. Here's Cummins. End over end punt. Vigarito will run it back from his 33. With nine moves and the Colts with a lot of speed on special teams coverage sweep him under at the 37. 42 yard punt a four yard return and Miami comes out with its offense in 45 seconds showing on the first quarter clock. Well, last drive by the Miami Dolphins impressive but they still couldn't get the ball down the field even with uh, the Marx brothers out there and uh, this team it almost appears that they insist on not running the football. I average about 25 carries per ball game, which is the lowest in the NFL, Don. How's this for a touchdown? Richard Dent, defensive end for the Bears, intercepted Danny White and returned it all of one yard. <laughs> Whatever it takes. Some strange Bears get in the end zone, but they win a lot of games. Some unlikely Bears. Now here's a handoff and running with the ball, but not for very much on a power run. Davenport gets the call and gets to his 38-yard line. Brad White, middle guard from Tennessee. The nose tackle made the knockdown. He's got a tough assignment today over Dwight Stevenson. This guy can play, though. He is very active at that nose tackle. Sometimes he's right up on Stevenson's nose. Other times he'll be a good three or four yards off the ball. Marks Brothers so far have been closed down in this game. Matt Moore has a big reception for a first down to the Miami field goal. Dolphins failing 10-3. Dan Marino going deep. Duper trying to get under it and running with him stride for stride was Eugene Daniel. Who has five interceptions so far this year, and that'll be the final play of the first quarter. Now, one of the things we wanted to watch early is how Duper runs on that leg on this AstroTurf. He does not appear to be limping at all. He appears to be very healthy. That's excellent coverage by Eugene Day Daniel. So after the first 15 minutes, the Colts a surprise leader with a 10 to 3 lead over the Miami Dolphins. We'll be back to Indianapolis after this. Who's been directing the Indianapolis offense and after a 10 3 lead, although the touchdown came on a punt return of 70 yards. We open the second quarter now at the Hoosier Dome. Don Tricky with Bob Trumpy. The carefully crafted passing game of the Dolphins has not been that effective so far. There's a throw and a strike, though. Coming off the flank again was Nat Moore, catching a lot of balls in his 12th season as a Dolphin, turning out on defensive back Keith Lee, an 11-yard gain and a first down. And he's running the same pattern from the same formation. He's been open three times. Marino's gotten him the ball twice. On Keith Daniel, that nickel back, and that's still very quick. And you just see that little hesitation, that false step by the defensive back, Keith Lee, and that's enough for Marino to get him in there for a first down. Dan Marino gives off on the run and they take it straight ahead and get good yardage as the Miami line comes off nicely. Dolphins not known for super big offensive linemen. Very quick and fine trap blockers. Barry Kraus inside linebacker made the fill and the hit for Indianapolis. Rod Dauhauer in his first year as an NFL head coach came in as the offensive coordinator last season at St. Louis where they had a Real contender, the Cardinals have slumped this year. That quite possibly is a factor as Chicago continues to lead the uh, Dallas Cowboys 7 0 now in the second quarter. Marino with a nice ball thrown, a tight spiral goes on the flank. Down with the ball is Mark Duper. Just his 13th reception this season after missing eight games with the leg injury. Now, now here's one of the things about the Miami Dolphins that you got to love. The first time the Indianapolis Colts today have soft coverage on their corners. Marino audibilizes and throws a little quick out to Mark Duper. This offense, to most defenses, dictates a great deal from the line of scrimmage. It strikes fast. Don Strzok, close ally of Dan Marino, really works as a quarterback coach in addition to the backup looking on as Marino takes time and drills. Clayton coming back at the ball has it, and he's down to the 33-yard line. Good gain on the play of about seven yards. Preston Davis, the cornerback, was taken deep, and then so quick, Clayton turned back on him. Their first two catches, the Marks brothers. First, Clayton from right here in Indianapolis went to Louisville. Certainly been a surprise for the Miami Dolphins, but the numbers that kid put on the board last year were just phenomenal. Mind-boggling. 73 receptions, almost 1,400 yards, 18 touchdowns. He was the number one receiver in pro football by every measuring standard. 
Straight ahead run is going to be close to the first down for the Dolphins as they get it down to the 28. There was a computerized assessment of all the wide receivers in pro football. And last year, Mark Clayton, the Dolphins, had a 131 rating. Roy Green, the all-pro from the Cardinals, was a distant second at 114. Yeah, you see the similarity between those two uh, receivers that you're talking about, Roy Green and uh, Mark Clayton, both very small, very quick, unbelievably fast. Don Shula taking advantage of the one-bump rule and the quickness of those little guys. Still amazes about the youth of this Miami offense. Marino's just 24 years old. Clayton's 24. Duper's 25. First down and 10 for the Dolphins, who trail by seven. Marino gives himself time with a play fake, and Dan Johnson has the ball, and he's down to the five-yard line. Dan Johnson, a big tight end from Iowa State that Coach Don Shula says could turn out to be a real standout. Getting better all the time. Wide open, those good hands. He takes the ball and a hit for a 23-yard gain for Miami. The Dolphins also use Hardy and Rose in very particular assignments. Look how tightly that ball spirals to Dan Johnson. That's an excellent pass thrown by Marino and an easy ball to catch by any receiver. So all of a sudden, the Hoosier Dome has grown very quiet after the Colts opened up with a 10-0 first quarter lead. Now the Dolphins, with 11 minutes to play in the first half, are challenging for what could be the tying touchdown. Marino, after the slow start, has hit his last four passes. Nothing. That's to about the three-yard line. Tony Nathan running the ball straight ahead, and Brad White, the nose tackle for Indianapolis, made the stop. Jets doing some stuff now. Johnny Hector ran in for a touchdown for three yards. And O'Brien just threw to Wesley Walker for 22. And the Jets have tied Tampa Bay. News that will not hearten Don Shulin, the Dolphin fans. He's got his own worries, though. This is the spot where the Dolphins have struggled inside that five-yard line when they, they've got to mount some kind of a running threat here just to keep the defense on it. This is the 10th play of this drive for Miami. Dolphins trailing 10 to 3. Pitch back Lorenzo Hampton, and he's heading into the end zone for a touchdown. Big play. Hit the goal line and broke the crust. For Lorenzo Hampton, the first year runner from Florida, takes it in for his second touchdown as a professional. And with the extra point coming up, Wad Reves can tie the game at 10 all. That's a good extra effort by Hampton, too, who is a pretty good sized running back. And once he gets down there close to the line of scrimmage or close to the goal line at six foot two twelve watch the body lean excellent body lean Davenport with an outstanding block out in front and he finally gets it in the end zone Lorenzo Hampton pays with some hits but he gets in and now the Dolphins are ready to tie the game Quad Reves is 25 for 25 taking extra points perfect again and with 10.05 to play in the first half, the Miami Dolphins have rallied from a 10-0 deficit. A 63-yard drive on 10 plays ties the game at 10-10. We'll be back with the Dolphins kickoff after this. Today's game is brought to you by Renault Jeep, where commitment to quality and innovation form a winning team. By the U.S. Armed Forces, it's a great place to start. And by Nikon, we take the world's greatest pictures. The Miami Dolphins have just driven down the field 63 yards. The touchdown by rookie Lorenzo Hampton, who's now in the team on the team to cover special the kickoff play, the special teams play. As Squad Reve is going to kick the ball off for the Dolphins. A 10-10 game with 10.05 to play in the first half. Reves hits a high spinner. Albert Bentley runs it back for Indianapolis. And very well as Albert Bentley is out to the 32-yard line. Thirty one yard return for Albert Bentley who came to the Colts from the U.S. Football League. Just got a note from the Indianapolis bench George Wansley out with a full groin muscle doesn't look like he'll return Cleveland Green of the Miami Dolphins had his ankle x-rayed It does not appear he will return sprained ankle is the diagnosis. The Jets now Trump have come from 14 points down to take the lead over Tampa Bay 17 to 14 on a Pat Leahy field goal 31 points in the first quarter of that game. There's Cleveland Green. Mike Pagel a quarterback for Indianapolis first and 10 from his 32 yard line. Timing 
pattern are going to Wayne Tapers, a former Pittsburgh Steeler. So it'll be second down and ten as Pagel tries to burn him early on first down. No, no, this is this is strange. Why are the Colts now suddenly going on first down, throwing the ball when they were having such great success running it in the first drive of the ball game? Uh, I, I don't think you can describe this Colt offense as one of the most prolific passing offenses you'll find in the league. What they do and do best is run behind Hutt and Hinton and haven't in quite a while. First down throws can be expensive when you miss them, and they got to throw again now on second and long. Swing pass goes to Curtis Dickey with blockers out in front. Curtis Dickey crashes ahead to the 43-yard line. He gets a first down. That's the biggest play he's made this season for Indianapolis. And the crowd responds, an 11-yard gain on the swing pass. Now, that's an excellent call. They caught the Miami Dolphins in a blitz. You, you'll see, I think, yeah, watch Hugh Green at the bottom of the screen, 55. Dickey lets him go, kind of pulls him down with a headlock, gets the ball out, Pagel gets the ball out to him, and Dickey with outstanding speed, world-class speed, picks up an easy 11 yards and a first down. So the Colts get a big play on second down and, and 10. It's now first down and 10 for the Indianapolis Colts at their 43-yard line. There we go. Randy McMillan breaks it up the middle, so he's superior trap blocking. 66 Ron Solt blasted out an eight yard game results and the Colts start to drive their offense has been quiet for a while in the last two plays tell you what the official got trapped too Solt first round draft choice he is part of a very gifted offensive line that the Indianapolis Colts have watching into this play as the tackle is made the official is decked but he's all right back up now Pagel has an interesting play call it is second down and two go to the flea flicker any time. They have that in their playbook. Hand off to Curtis. That's Randy McMillan turning the corner and he gets ahead for the first down. When they go to the flicker, it'll probably be on second or third and short yardage. Yeah, but when you go to McMillan, they like to run right at that same spot. Right at Bo Camper and Hugh Green. And that was a good lead block by Curtis Dickey. Give credit where credit is due. Dickey got Hugh Green's hands down. McMillan able to run right around him for a good pickup and another first down. Either the pass offense, the pass blocking. They give Pagel time. Very strong of arm. Very quick rolling out. As you see the time in the second quarter, 8-16 to play. The game is tied 10-10. Swings it. Curtis Dickey gets the ball, puts some moves on, and Dickey's ahead inside the 35 yard line of Miami. Down to the 33 and nine yard gain on first down. And all of a sudden, Curtis Dickey's come alive. He's been quiet all season long. But Brown on the tackle started out the season with an injured knee. This is a nice reception and also a, a tough pass for Fagel to throw. Good moves there, avoiding Brophy, avoiding Green. Finally, Mike Charles from the nose come, but comes back and makes initial contact. And it's second, about one. Second and one it is now as Indianapolis starts to drive here in the second quarter. The game tied 10-10. Curtis Dickey gets the call. He's big and strong and gets to the 30. He has a first down for the Colts. Mark Brown from Purdue made the stop for the Miami Dolphins. But Curtis Dickey turning in some plays, gets a first down for Indianapolis with 7.15 to play in the half. Not even though this Colts offensive line is a relatively young offensive line, they play this entire season together. Now watch those two off offensive linemen pull. That's Baldeschweiler, 72, Salt, 66, long pull. They will open a little space there and Dickey up for a first down. Game tied, 10-10. Second quarter of play. Hagel gets time, swings it out over the blitzing linebacker, Brzezinski, and Curtis Dickey thunders down inside the 20. Nice play call and a good look by Mike Hagel. He saw the blitz coming from Bob Brzezinski and went right to that area where Dickey had swung out. 10 yard gain, first down, Indianapolis. That's exactly the same play they ran on the other side of the field. They did it against Hugh Green and it worked. They come back and use it against Brzezinski and it works. Unbeaten Bears have extended their lead over Dallas on a Kevin Butler field goal. It is now 10-0 Chicago second quarter at Irving, Texas. And Atlanta leads the NFC's Western leader, the L.A. Rams, 17-0. Wow. Gerald Riggs has scored on two touchdown runs for Atlanta. 
Nicky has now put three receptions in the book for 30 yards. Colts offense looking sharp. 6.20 to play in the first half. First down gives to Curtis Dickey, a world-class fitter who can accelerate, make that quick shuffle move, and then sprint ahead. He gets down inside the 15-yard line. Blockers were in front of him. Tackle was made by the nose tackle, Mike Charles, now in his third year from Syracuse. And in the last couple of three weeks, Mike Charles has played very well for Miami. That time, once again, student body right. Folks like those young offensive linemen to get ahead of steam up there. And Curtis Dickey smart enough to wait for them to make their blocks. That's a good, quick five-yard pickup. Last four plays, the ball has gone to Curtis Dickey. They're receiving and running. So he's back in the offense, and the Colts are moving in this tie game. Randy McMillan picks his way, gets maybe to the 12-yard line. On second and four, he got a couple. It'll bring up third down and short for Indianapolis as the game clock winding down to 5-14 and running in the second quarter. And the game is tied, 10-10. Of course, the last time the Colts were down in this area, they had to settle for a field goal. And you're playing a team of the quality of the Miami Dolphins. Every time you get the ball into the 20, you've got to get the ball in the end zone for a chance to win. So far, the Colts have not fumbled the ball. They did throw an interception. Mike Pagel did earlier. Fumbles have been the downfall of this team in the recent weeks. Here's a pitch back in McMillan. I'll end around. This could be the flicker. No, Raymond Butler's going to run it. Taking it down, he didn't get much. He's short of the first down as the Dolphins spring out the defense and knock him out of bounds. Dolphins were not fooled, Don. That they ran that same play for a touchdown last week on a flea flicker, and the Dolphins were looking for it. They were not fooled one single bit. The loss of about a yard on the play. McMillan to Butler, and there's a lot of white jerseys over there to make the tackle. Mac Moore, Charles out there to help with the tackle. Only Blackwood gets him out of bounds for about a two-yard loss, and once again, a missed opportunity by the Colts. What a chance for three points that would break the tie if a leg break and hit here. You see his numbers very good inside the 40. Had long, a lot of problems with the longer distance outside the 40s, two for seven this season. Game is tied 10-10 with 4.36 to play in the first half. 30-yard field goal attempt. He's on the way, and Allegre's been perfect. And the Indianapolis Colts again have the lead. It is a 13-10 game. So we'll be back with Allegre to kick off right after this. It's by the Indianapolis Colts, at least through the first two quarters, Trump. Yeah, as you said at the top of the game, all Dalhauer wants is a chance for his team to be close, for a chance to win the ball game in the later stages. And so far, they've played very well. Now they kick it off after Allegre's second field goal. Lorenzo Hampton in the end zone. He'll not bring it out. It'll come out to the 20-yard line. First and 10 there for Dan Marino and the Dolphins. Four twenty-eight to play in the first quarter. Indianapolis took a 10-0 first quarter lead. There was a big play for the Colts in this game if you joined us late. A 70-yard punt return for a touchdown by Robbie Martin. That gave them a 10-0 lead. Now Dan Marino has started to find the numbers, throwing the ball. Started off slowly, but he's been gunning it right in there. He's hit his last four passes as now Miami goes first and 10 from the Dolphins 20. Joe Carter, he's quick. And Joe Carter spins out to the 28-yard line. A good run by the Dolphins. Barry Krause, a big inside linebacker. A former number one out of Alabama where he played in the national championship team. Makes a hard hit. Joe Carter, though, gives the Dolphins second down and one. Now, I'll tell you what, the uh, Colts are letting it all hang out here. They're coming with the blitz. That time, Nesby Glasgow, the strong safety. He uh, blitzed, and Carter ran right up underneath him for nine yards. Second down and just a yard now for Marino and the Dolphins. Again, they go back to the rookie Hampton, and he's ahead to the 35-yard line. Some very fine offensive line blocking by Miami as they spring the back for a good gain, and now with 3.40 to play in the first half, Hampton gets the first down as the Dolphins drive on. Cliff Odom on the tackle, too, and watch the nose. Stevenson versus White. 
Good job by Taves on Kraus. Hampton up there for a first down. Five carries, now 11 yards and a touchdown. Dan Marino with first down for Miami. Hard throw, catching the ball. Tony Nathan, he's close to a first down. He's going to be about a yard and a half short. Dan Marino's now hit his last five completions in the game after a slow start. Dolphins trailing the Colts 13 to 10 with 2.55 to play in the first half. Don Crickey with Bob Trumpy at the sold out Hoosier Dome in Indianapolis. It is also a great day outside in Indiana. A lot of rain here though in the recent days. But in the Dome it's always 72 and clear. Right now Miami's Dan Marino make sure his backs are on the same page. Getting set with a second down and two call. Play fake. So nice. And there's the quick throw in. Tony Nathan's ahead to the 49-yard line of the Dolphins. He has another Miami first down. Cliff Odom on the tackle. That was a second down in about a yard. And the Dolphins prefer to throw the ball. You see the play fake. And Nathan becomes the primary receiver just out the flat underneath the linebacker coverage. And Nathan knows what to do when he gets the ball. Turn directly upfield when you need short yardage for a first down. Durable back. He was a teammate of Barry Krause on that national championship team at Alabama. For his three years there as a starter, he averaged over six yards a carry, did Tony Nathan. Now two minutes to play in the first half, and the Colts continue to lead the game 13 times. Two minutes from now, Bob Castus will be talking with the commissioner of the National Football League, Pete Rozelle, a special guest today on NFL 85. As now the Miami Dolphins with a first and 10 coming up from their 49-yard line, still trailing the game 13 to 10. They were down 10 nothing, tied at 10 all. Here's a penalty marker down, and the play is whistled dead before Marino unloads. That's going to be on, yes, Miami. Unfortunately, Jeff Dallenbach moved early. It cost them five yards to be first and 15. Rod Dahar felt beating a Don Shula team, you have to hold the ball. You can't try to All outscore start, them. Number 65. Offense. Get into a shootout with Miami, you're usually going to come up short because nobody hits it as fast as the Dolphins, particularly with their two superior wideouts back in the game. Yeah, I agree. Most teams, when they play Miami, they try for a lot of offensive uh, time of possession. That is the best way to beat Miami because you keep the best part of their team, the offense, off the field. See, Marino starting to build the passing numbers. Maybe another quarterback will never equal the numbers he put up last year in his second season. Almost 5,100 yards, throwing the ball, 48 touchdowns. Including Dan Marino. Those are heavy numbers they have to live up to, Don. That was the thing. You know, they came back this year, and everybody said, can he duplicate it or beat it? They're starting to look for him to beat his own record. They might be up as long as DiMaggio's 56-game hitting streak. You got to play in a tremendous team to come near those numbers. Throwing a strike. Mark Cooper takes the ball inside the 40 yard line. The Dolphins get a first down. Vintage Marino at quick fire and Mark Duper breaking away from the defense with a quick move into the interior portion of the field. And the Dolphins go into alignment without a huddle. Two minute offense. 139 and running to play. Second quarter, the Dolphins trail 13 10. Marino triggers it out. There's Tony Nathan. He's got some as he's inside the 35-yard line. The Dolphins with all three of their timeouts remaining. And they're going to take one right now with 1.23 to play in the first half. You can see the Colts come on with their uh, nickel package, too. They try to sneak him in there on one play. The Dolphins call a timeout. Huddle, Don Strock, Don Shula, Dan Marino put their heads together, come up with several plays. We'll be back right after this. Indianapolis, the Miami Dolphins are trailing with 1.22 to play in the first half. Down 13 to 10. They now have second down and six coming up from the 33 yard line of Indianapolis. To the run they go, and Nathan breaks it ahead for close to a first down. Dolphins with two timeouts remaining. And did you see the game clock ticking down? Quad Reves, the rookie place kicker who's having a standout season, gets himself set. Marino with Plays free call, sets his team now. Game clock down to one minute. We're in the second quarter. Dolphins down by three. Quick drop. He's going for it, but Joe Rose can't get to the ball. 
Tight end Joe Rose, but in the post pattern, was open for the moment as you see the pass skips in incomplete. Anthony Young on the coverage. Don, you can see one of the effects of these indoor stadiums that it is having on the Miami Dolphins. I think normally Miami would go from the shotgun indoors. Dan Marino goes up underneath the center. Six defensive backs in a ball game. Rose runs right inside the numbers. He's open. Danny overthrows him, and Danny's mad at himself. Glasgow almost got his hand on the ball. Marino had eight consecutive completions until that miss. 52 seconds on the second quarter clock. Second down and 10 Miami. 27-yard line of Indianapolis. Marino looks. Nobody there but Eugene Daniel, the cornerback, making a play on the ball. It'll be third down and 10 for Miami. And the game clock down to 46 seconds to play. He's looking at Mark Clayton. Yeah, that's certainly a misconnection there. Clayton went up into the end zone. Marino threw it to the sideline. And one of the things receivers should do is certainly stay with the pattern. Clayton at the top of the screen. Now, if he has a breakout, he should break underneath the man in coverage. Instead, he breaks on top of it. That's got interception written all over it. That's a mistake on Clayton's part. Right now, third down comes up. The crowd very supportive of this. Indianapolis defense, which has played so well against the high-scoring Dolphins, starts up. Tough for Marino to make the play call. He looks. Good coverage into the end zone. It goes. It's a drop oh. ball. Clayton had his hands on it and lost it. It was a sure touchdown. Perfect strike thrown by Marino, and Mark Clayton drops the ball. Preston Davis on the coverage. Well, Clayton knows. The opportunity is missed. Just a great job of scrambling by Marino. This ball gets right through his hands and into his chest. And then it's very tough to catch. And a missed opportunity by the Miami Dolphins. A chance to get it in the end zone for a touchdown. It's going to end up in a 44-yard field goal attempt. Don Strzok holds. He's a quarterback. Bob Ravais is perfect this season inside the 50. He has just two misses of 52 and 56 yards. This is a 44-yard attempt. What a kicker. He told me before the game he tries to keep it through the hash marks. All the kickers have different measuring sticks. He says he wants to put it up and keep it in the middle of the hash mark. Well, the hash marks are the same width as the uprights are. So a good idea by Fouad Fred Ravais. Buffalo playing some strong defense leads the favorite Cleveland Browns. And the Packers in the cold of Green Bay lead the New Orleans Saints. And Phillips said this week, if I don't win five of the last six, I should be gone. A lot of people agree with him. Well, you don't hear a coach say it often, though. Spinning kick downfield, and Albert Bentley says no, he'll take it out on a touchback. Only first and ten there for Indianapolis. The way the Dolphins started this ball game, their first three drives all ended in punts. Their last three drives and points. A field goal, a touchdown, and a field goal. Colt started off with a, a field goal. And then an interception, then a punt, and a field goal. Of course, what's not included in there is that 70-yard punt return by Robbie Martin. See it in Dan Marino's eyes. He wants to get back in there and start firing, although it's unlikely he will until the third quarter. Just 34 seconds to play now in the first half here at Indianapolis. The Colts and the Dolphins locked in a 13-13 game. Mike Tagle with wide receivers to either side. Hands up. And it is Randy McMillan getting some yards. Dolphins playing pass coverage, allowing to get out to the 30-yard line. Looks like a first down. Don, I'll tell you, this is exactly where the Colts want to be. Tied 13-13 at halftime with a very good team like the Miami Dolphins. The young team, all you want to try to do is stay close so that a turnover, a fumble of some sort, a mistake on your opponent's part, and you got a chance to get it in the end zone. We saw them play the Jets up in New York, and that's exactly the situation they were in. And unfortunately, with a bad spot, they weren't able to get the ball in the end zone to beat the Colts. I think the final score was 25-20, New yep. York Jets. Then three weeks ago, the Jets came in here and won handily. Robbie Martins made the biggest play in this game, a 70-yard touchdown return of a punt. And that at the time gave Indianapolis a 10-0 lead. The Dolphins subsequently came back to tie the game, but this was the big play as it occurred in the first quarter. 49-yard punt by Roby. Nobody touches him. Watch this move on Reggie Roby. 
just uh, anchors him to the turf and then runs the rest of the way untouched. 70 yards. There's the first touchdown of the day. Bobby Martin having a career day. He's returned three punts for an average of over 37 yards a try. And of course, the 70 yarder was the big one. Right now, it's a 13 13 game, as you see. The Colts with the ball. First down and 10 coming up with just 21 seconds remaining in the first half. Halftime, Pete Rosell, the special guest on NFL 85. We'll be joining Bob Costas in our studios in New York as Mike Pagel sets his team. Dickey looks to accelerate and does. He gets out to the 37-yard line as the Colts apparently are going to settle for a standoff through the first two quarters with the favored Dolphins. Mike Childs makes the stop. Interesting crowd reaction here in Indianapolis. They go from super exuberant and loud to where the stands almost look like a painting. Gun sounds. They wanted the Colts to try for points, but Rod Dauhauer plays percentages, and Mike Pagel and the Colts go to the locker room. And a standoff with the favorite Miami Dolphins through the first two quarters of play. Don Shula has to be upset with his Miami Dolphins giving up a punt return for a touchdown. In the first quarter not playing very well. In the second quarter finally getting on track but missing a scoring opportunity that resulted in a field goal. Indianapolis won the first quarter then the Dolphins came back in the second getting the most points there and so we go to a 13-13 halftime tie. Dan Marino's play was interesting. It started off very slowly, just couldn't find the mark, and all of a sudden, when he gets hot, nobody does it better. Yeah, he finally started getting it outside to Clayton and Duper. In the first half, he was 11 of 20 for 101 yards. So right now, with the score at halftime, 13-13 Miami and Indianapolis, and NFL 85 coming up with special guest Commissioner Pete Rozelle. We'll be right back. After these messages, tackle Cleveland Greeners. We'll be right back. After these messages, tackle Cleveland Greeners. Wansley on the sideline with that pulled muscle. Cleveland Green, though, uh, got his leg rolled up on from the back. Watch what happens here as he's pass protecting. That's Donnell Thompson. It comes right up the leg of Cleveland Green. He has a sprained ankle, will not play the rest of the day. Uh, Dahlenbach is taking his place. Of course, protecting Dan Marino. Very, very important, Don. Boy, it sure is, and the Dolphins came into the game as the leader in the NFL in allowing the fewest sacks, and that play to Nell Thompson not only took out Cleveland Green, he also got Dan Marino. Right now, to start the third quarter of play, the Colts are going to get the ball as they're back with Albert Bentley deep. Wad Reves ready to boot the ball for the Miami Dolphins. 13-13, not on the scoreboard. Hits a good spinner downfield, angles it to the corner, and here comes Albert Bentley with a bobble ball. And gets to the 20, had to work hard to do that. Don numbers in the first half, not very impressive for either team. 153 total yards for the Miami Dolphins, 125 for the Indianapolis Colts. The biggest play for the Colts in the first half, of course, that 70-yard punt return by Robbie Martin. And that's their only touchdown of the game. They had two field goals by Raul Allegre. Score tied 13-13. Talking to some of the Indianapolis coaches at halftime, they felt one of the keys was to maintain ball control. They felt they were successful with their run blocking. Also very impressed by the Colts coaches with their defensive effort. They have great respect for the Miami Dolphins, a team that's had little trouble beating the Colts in recent years. Here's a handoff as they go to the run again. Good up front blocking from Indianapolis. Running hard with the ball straight ahead is the fullback, Randy McMillan. And he gets the ball just across the 25, close to the 27-yard line. So he got up over six yards on the carry. And it does appear that the Dolphins have made a change defensively. Look at this alignment. you got two linebackers out here on the tight end, a defensive tackle. Although Hinton really firing out on Bocamp for doing a great job on him. Look at this defense now. It looks like the bear defense. All three down linemen down inside against the Colts. Bears are blowing away the Dallas Cowboys, 24 to nothing. Hagel on the run, very quick. He takes a hard, head-high shot. The guy who knows how to put the hit on, Mark Brown. Dolphins' number one tackler. 
In his third year from Purdue, Hagel's a gamer, though. He's up and ready to direct the offense again. Doesn't look like his thumb is bothering him at all. First half, Head he, right now. Yeah, first half, he hit his thumb on the shoulder pad of Mac Moore. He seems to be all right. Measurement for the first down. We got to watch that Miami defense. They're changing it here a little bit to try to accommodate the rush of the Indianapolis Colts. First down, Colts. First down it is for Indianapolis. Miami giving up a lot of yards this year. As we pointed out earlier, the Dolphins came in 13th in the American Conference in total defense and 26th in the NFL. Like a week ago against the Jets when they gave up almost 500 yards to the New York offense. They only gave up 17 points and won the game. You get down close to the Dolphin goal line, it gets tough. We've seen that illustrated today as the Colts on impressive drives have taken it down. Chuck Studley, the Miami defensive coordinator, looking on. Twice they had to come away with a leg race field goal. A big rush on Cagle. His foot speed saves him for the moment. Mike Charles had two shots at him, and Cagle goes down to the 48-43 yard line. Hugh Green finally ran him down. A 12-yard gain by quarterback Mike Cagle. He's a dancer, and he had to do it twice to elude Mike Charles. Look at the smile on Bagel's face. One, Charles was absolutely untouched. Watch what happens. Gets right in between Hutt and Donaldson. They both watch. And then I'll tell you what. Bagel turns scat back. A 12-yard pickup now. Two rushes, 16 yards. Big play, Indianapolis. In September, the Dolphins beat these Colts 30-13 to 13 at the Orange Bowl. Now they go to the run again to the Indianapolis. Colts and on the carry Curtis Dickey getting his most work of the season lost his hat but got across the 45 and got ahead for about three yards it'll be second down and seven Dickey has played absolutely nothing so far this season not till today here's a man who they clocked when he weighed about 212 pounds at 426 in the 40 if you can believe that he's had one big year for the Colts that was in Baltimore when he rushed for 1100 yards in 83 17 yards for Curtis Dickey. Dropping the throw. Mike Pagel, man, is open. Pat Beach drops the ball. His roommate on the road and tight end. Pat Beach open. The ball was there. But the Colts come up empty on what would have been a big hit. Kind of looked like Jay Brophy, middle linebacker, got his hand up there. That's from behind the offense. This is splitting that zone down the middle. There's Brophy. No, he didn't touch it. I thought maybe a might have changed the direction of the ball a little bit. A ball that normally would be caught by Beach. Dolphins make a major substitution defensively. Play the chess game as the Colts now align with third down and seven coming up. Tie game early in the third quarter, 13 all. Hagel gets all day. There's a man, Raymond Butler, and he drops the ball at the 28-yard line. And three big drops in this game by Indianapolis receivers. Paul Langford that time in coverage. Butler with outstanding speed, able to just run wide right away from him. He's the inside receiver, and now it's just a foot race once he makes the break. And look at Butler accelerate. And the Colts go right back to the line of scrimmage for a punt. Only one punt in the first half for Ron Stark. Punt in the first half that his counterpart for Miami, Reggie Roby, would like to get back. That was the run, one run back, 70 yards for a touchdown. Terrific hit. Way downfield, and the Dolphins let it hop, and it takes a Colt roll. Whoa. Well, he's out of bounds inside the one. 53 yard punt, and as you see, there was surely no return. The Dolphins get the ball for the first time in the third quarter, but they get it in jail. Daniel. Watch when he makes contact with this ball. Now his head hits that cone in the end zone. That is inbounds in the end zone, but I don't think he never had the ball in the framework of his body and hit that cone, and therefore it's out at the two. Watch the two styles. Reggie Roby of the Miami Dolphins. Great average foot. Never leaves the ground, his plant foot. Ron Stark comes way off the ground when he punts the ball. He's a south footer. Long-range bombers, and now the Dolphins with Marino throwing from his end zone, and he's got a man in net. Moore had the ball and lost it. They're going to rule it incomplete. Tough call, boy, that is a tough call. He turned and ran with it and lost it, but they rule it incomplete. Watch 
once again the second foot must be down when he catches the ball. And we're going to have a tough time seeing when I don't think his second foot ever hit the ground, Don. That must be the ruling, the official right there. They don't like getting that down, but the call goes, and the ball down, an incomplete pass goes back to the two-yard line of Miami. They're not supposed to like it, but once again, that second foot has to hit the ground with clear control before it's a completion. A very confident, crafty Dan Marino, deep in a hole, firing from his end zone right on the mark. Maybe he will again now on second down and ten. Marino takes another look. They take care of him, gets it away, going long. and Clayton was right there, hit him between the eight and the three. And this is right into the teeth of the coverage between Preston Davis, the corner, Anthony Young, the safety, on a line. Great concentration on the football. He also takes the hit. Big first down pickup. You can see the confidence that Don Shula has in his offense. Any penalty they have down there, right. two-point safety. safety, and you lose control of the ball. And the offensive penalty in the offensive end zone is indeed a safety, but the Dolphins get a big hit like they like it in Miami and now Dan Marino goes and here comes Lorenzo Hampton the rookie and he breaks it across midfield on a first down carry he's ahead for six maybe more yards before linebacker Johnny Cooks knocked him down and Marino getting sharp fires again and this time he gets out of the backfield to Ron Davenport for a short game down to the 45-yard line of Indianapolis, but it's probably going to be good for a first down. Boy, can you see what a play like that does to your team? Just lifts you right off of your seat, off of your feet. Marino, for the last two and a half years, has done that with such regularity. Some people think he's charmed, absolutely charmed. Well, he's as confident throwing from his own end zone as he is throwing into the opponents down close. Standing in and throwing a perfect strike to Clayton for the 43-yard gain. End up, and Woody Bennett gets called on to take it ahead for a good gain inside the 40. He's down to the 38-yard line. Gain of about seven on the play. This uh, play allowed to stay alive because of an incomplete pass here ruled by the officials right over the middle. Nat Moore on the receiving end. And the officials rule that second foot never went down. Anthony Young on the hit. The next one good for 43 yards. Nat waiting to get another crack at it. Right now, though, the Dolphins go on short yardage. Marino sees something he doesn't like as Jim Jensen was in the game to play wide receiver. He can play anything out there, I think, Jensen. Yeah, you're Although right. Him at nose tackle if they need everything. <laughs> He's got that big neck collar. It looks like he's ready to play nose tackle. Game clock stopped with 9.31 to play in the third quarter. Scoreboard still shows a tie game, 13-13. Dolphins driving in the third quarter. They started this drive inside their own two-yard line. Now they have the ball second down and three at the Indianapolis 38. The game is tied, 13-13. Don Cricky with Bob Crumpy at the sold-out Hoosier Dome. Running with the ball is rookie Lorenzo Hampton, and he's going to be ahead for a Miami first down. Now, while we have a moment, let's go to NFL 85 and an update with Ahmad Rashad. Ahmad? All right, Don Cricky in Houston. The question all year has been, where is Mike Rozier? Well, here he is, a 15-yard touchdown, making the score Pittsburgh 10, Houston 7. Since then, the Steelers have added a field goal. The score is now in the third quarter, 13-7 Pittsburgh. Thank you, Ahmad. We have 8.55 and running in the third quarter at the Hoosier Dome. Dan Marino has the Dolphins moving from deep in their own end. Now they're starting to challenge. Marino play faking. Great flip pickup by Bennett. He throws a strike, does Marino, to Bruce Hardy. Woody Bennett made that play go. He picked up the blitzing backer and stuck him on his back with a pass block that allowed Marino time to throw. It was good for a 17-yard gain and a first down. Cliff Odom on the tackle. A tight end coming coming from the back side of the formation has been an excellent an excellent offensive play for the Miami Dolphins for years. They really don't throw the ball to the tight end that much. It's more the element of surprise. If tight ends have gotten less and less in the Miami offense. Well, I guess when you have Duper and Clayton, the numbers they yeah. put up last year. Nice 
to go for a 40 yard gain rather than something short over the middle. It's now first down and 10 though as Miami challenges to break the tie. Swing pass. Hardy turned up field and the throw as you see was behind him. Yeah, that looked like a blitz and a blitz read that Dan Marino saw. Bruce Hardy did not. Look at that score. Chicago blowing out the Dallas Cowboys in Dallas. In Dallas with Jim McMahon on the shelf. Jets in Tampa Bay having a track meet at Giant Stadium in New York. That's still in the second quarter, 38 to 21. They're going for a bonus in that game, going for the record. Marino now 13 to 25, 172 yards. Now Marino, who is so adroit at play faking, faking the handoff to a runner, then dropping the throw. Let's see what he does now on second and ten. Straight drop. Lots of different patterns. He looks at all of them and throws a strike down to the nine-yard line. Gain a hit on the play for about seven yards. Dan Marino, who can throw bullets or throw with a touch. Looked like Danny had two choices there. He had Jensen coming in motion, who just ran a about a six or a seven-yard pattern and stopped. And so did Lorenzo Hampton. They don't throw to Crash Jensen often. When they do, he appreciates it. Crash Jensen, they call him. Full face mask, neck collar, and can play quarterback. So Crash T-shirt, a Crash Jensen T-shirt. He'll sell you one. He's got some good moving there in Miami. Six defensive backs in. Dan Marino at third down and three coming up. Tie game. There's the ball. There's an open man, but Joe Rose can't get to it in the corner of the end zone as Marino's on his back when the play ends. Coming on the rush for Indianapolis on the play. Danelle Thompson was moving, and so was Scott Burkus, number 94. So now the Dolphins will try to break the tie with a field goal. They flushed him. Once again, the Colts have done an excellent job of keeping Miami out of the end zone. This drive started, you remember, at the Miami three-yard line. And to keep them out of the end zone now, settle for a 26-yard field goal, a big plus for the Colts. Wad Revey, 17 for 17 on field goal attempts inside the 50 as a rookie. His brother at Tennessee is the leading place kicker in the NCAA from a percentage standpoint. Revey's, oh. though, has his first in-close miss of the season. He's wide, and so a most impressive Miami Dolphin drive comes up empty at the end. The field goal attempt by Revey's is wide, and with 7-10 to play in the third quarter, the Colts get the ball. Hit the upright. We'll be back to the Hoosier Dome right after this. Watch the ball and the way it's placed here. It really wasn't put up on its point. And I think that's why Rebaix missed the kick. Live action, Curtis Dickey runs with the ball and does a good job getting ahead. Dating the Dolphin front line of defense, the down lineman. Here's the missed field goal once again. Watch the reaction by Rebaix. As soon as he hits, he goes, oh, no, how could I miss that? Good second look. Our producer today for NBC Sports is Glenn Adamo. Our director, John Gonzalez, is Quad Reves, who is a top high school linebacker at Sunset High in Miami. is a high school student before going to Tennessee, the only school that offered him a scholarship. He's on the sidelines hoping for another chance. 6.36 to play third quarter. Game tied as it was at the half, 13 all. Hagel sprinting out on a call play with protection. Free ball. Blackwood has it for the Dolphins. Blackwood nailed from behind, but the Dolphins get it back at the 33-yard line. Wayne Capers on the tackle. Ball should not have been thrown. Blackwood gets up limping. Bagel rolling to his left. Of course, he's a right-handed thrower. He's got a square of his shoulders. The ball is tipped at the line of scrimmage, and the receiver was covered from the outset. The second turnover of the day by the Indianapolis Colts. And boy, that tackle. I think he's up and walking, though, so he appears to be all right. There's Mike Pagel talking with Chip Myers, the receivers coach of the Indianapolis Colts. Watch this tackle. He never sees Wayne Capers coming from the left side. Well, that's, that's been in it where it shouldn't have been. But Glenn Blackwood is all right, and so is the Miami to offense that gets the ball back now. First down and 10, game tied 13-13. 6.23 to play in the third quarter. Reno throws. Hardy makes sure and takes the ball down to the two-yard line. Oh, a great catch. How about the throw? 
Cliff Odom right on his shoulder. You can hear that ball buzz up here the way he throws that tight spiral. 30 yards on the pass and catch. You're right. That's an outstanding throw, but being a receiver, I think it's an even better catch. Right. This is taking advantage of the defense. Corners out. Corners up. Safety's out. That's linebacker coverage on the tight end. Whoa. That is a great big play for the Miami Dolphins. Bruce Hardy, who you'll remember, missed one earlier, now takes it down close to the goal line as the Dolphins look to break the tie. Davenport and Hampton, two rookies, are in the backfield behind Dan Marino. First and goal. Davenport. He got in. The hands are up, and the Dolphins break the tie with 5.38 to play in the third quarter. Miami goes in front 19 to 13. The sixth rushing touchdown by Ron Davenport. Nice little trap up the middle. And one of the officials is now saying it's no touchdown. Dan Marino is complaining that the guy out on the side motion touchdown. Okay, they're not. Yeah, they call it a touchdown. One guy is calling it a touchdown, and the referee is about to say touchdown. 60,000 referees in the stands disagree, but it's too late. Watch the trap. You can see the guard pull. Just gets up there. Hampton with, excuse me, Davenport with great extra effort. Whoa, wait a minute. He's, there's no way he's in the end zone. No way. He is now. The numbers are on the board, and the extra point is good, and then the touchdown is as official as if he went in standing up. They'll replay that one an awful lot here in Indianapolis. I don't think he got in, Don. Hey, that's one rookie that knows where the end zone is, though. His sixth TD this season. So well, they're going to get him a new shirt after the game. <laughs> he just got in the end zone. It was questionable, but he was in in the opinion of the official. Here's an onside kick try now. They got the it. Dolphins, they have the ball. The good teams make it happen, and the third quarter has been the undoing of the Colts many times before. It surely was a week ago at Foxborough against the Patriots. Moyer, Alex Moyer makes the recovery. It's legal. It rolled 10 yards. It must go 10 yards. The first line is five. It can't be touched until it goes 10 yards. It's over the line. That's a legal, that's a legal recovery. Completely fooled the Indianapolis Colts. That play was called correctly. I don't think Ron Davenport scored on the previous play. Well, you'll get some support from the Colt fans, but it's in the books, and right now the Dolphins have a 20 to 13 lead, and they have the ball back on what is the toughest kick in football, executing the onside kick. Watch Davenport. His body must break the plane of the end zone. You can see where he stood up there. Bickett's got a hold of him. There's no way it gets in the end zone, but there are seven officials out there. If one says touchdown, touchdown it is. Majority does not rule in the NFL. The referee can't overrule, but that time Pat Haggerty said yes, it was a touchdown, and so the Dolphins had the lead, and now at the onside kick successfully have the ball back, and Marino wants more fast. Downfield, he throws a strike for a first down. Coming up with the ball was Mark Duper. Big thing about these wideouts for Miami, Clayton and Duper, they're both 5'9", but can go to the moon jumping. They play like they're 6'8 when the ball comes in. Now, this is one of the few times that the cornerbacks for the Indianapolis Colts will not have to look up to receivers. Miami's recent possessions, putting up the points. Had a chance to score every time. You see only the missed field goal that hit the upright. But their lack of success in the recent drives is right now they have the ball first down and 10. 43-yard line of Indianapolis. Davenport takes it inside the 40 and gets down to the 38-yard line. This telecast is presented by authority of the National Football League. It is intended for the private use of our audience. And he rebroadcast for other use of this telecast without the express written consent of the Indianapolis Colts and the National Football League is prohibited. On second time, I think the Colts this season have gotten uh, a bad call on the spot of the ball against the Jets at the Meadowlands in New York. And today on the no touchdown by the Miami Dolphins. Marino has some big numbers now thrown at 16 for 29, 221 yards. Going long. Clayton going for it. Clayton in the end zone. It's broken up by Preston Davis. The left side corner. Separating the receiver from a sure touchdown. 
Preston Davis on the coverage. Marino's got plenty of time to throw the football. We'll watch this in its entirety. A nice little juke step there, trying to, trying to slow down that defensive back, and then Clayton with great speed tries to make the catch in front of the hometown folks. Great coverage by Preston Davis. Clayton is nobody to try to mess with in a foot race, and Davis stays up with it. Preston holds his own against these superior wide receivers. He was victimized in September at the Orange Bowl by the Dolphin receivers. Now for Marino and the Dolphins, it's third down and six. 38-yard line of Indianapolis, and the Dolphins lead the game for the first time, 20 to 13. Long ball, man open, Nat Moore might take it in. He's down to the goal line, but not in. It'll be first and goal from inside the one. We mentioned Keith Lee again, who seems to have matched up with Nat Moore all day. Moore's got about five catches, I believe, and all of them have been against Keith Lee coming right at you, folks. Nat Moore, the elder statesman on this Miami team, makes an outstanding reception. That's an accurate spot. And boy, you're right, it doesn't take long for Miami. Three catches now in the day. 65 yards. Doesn't take long for Miami to get control of the game, does it? It does not. That throw was good for 37 yards as Marino, who started out missing his targets, all of a sudden is starting to have a typical Marino day. Has been having that since the second quarter. He's up to 258 yards passing. And we're still in the third quarter. Over the top, Lorenzo Hampton, the other rookie, getting a lot of calls, is in for his second touchdown of the day, his third of the season. And the Dolphins have hit fast in the third quarter. And the demise of the Colts, at least to this point in the game, has been again the turnover in the third quarter. You'll recall Glenn Blackwood's interception was quickly turned into a touchdown. That broke the tie and gave the Dolphins their first lead of the day. And now they extend their lead to 13 points with the extra point coming up for the Shula Dolphins. Nothing fancy there. Good lead blocking by the Miami Dolphins. Hampton into the end zone, kind of dives over. You could see what it did to the Colts, too, standing there with their hands on their hips. Gentlemen, four minutes ago, we were in this ball game. Now, we're 14 points behind. Interception and a subsequent touchdown, then an onside kick that was successful. Another touchdown as Marino gets them close with the passes, and the big runners take it in. First, Davenport into the line, and then Lorenzo Hampton over the top. 319 to play in the third quarter, and the Dolphins all of a sudden have a 27 to 13 lead. It's a doubleheader day on NBC Sports. The Bengals, a co-leader in the AFC Central, go out to the Coliseum to play the L.A. Raiders. The New England Patriots, one of the co-leaders in the AFC East, play a rising Seattle team starting to come out again. San Diego's at Denver. The Chargers had an almost record offensive day last Sunday, beating the Raiders in an upset. Check your local listings for the game in your area on doubleheader day on NBC Sports. Here in Indianapolis, the Miami Dolphins, after the game was tied at halftime, have opened up with two third-quarter touchdowns to take a 27-13 lead. Lorenzo Hampton with two touchdowns today. Been the big uh, rusher for the Miami Dolphins. This is his first touchdown. This is an excellent, well-executed play by the Miami Dolphins. That was his first score. And we just saw his second rushing touchdown. This time, Reves hits a good kickoff. It'll carry deep, and Albert Bentley says no again as he'll down the ball for a touchback. And the Colts will have to start 80 yards from the Miami end zone. 3.13 to play, and now Rod Dauhauer to Mike Pagel got to open up the offense. Don't think they will, though. I really don't think they will. They got to stay basically with the game plan. The turnovers have certainly hurt the Colts today. And in the games they've lost so far this season, in their seven losses, they're now minus nine on the giveaway takeaway. And in their three wins, they're plus five. So with this young team, when they give it away, they lose. No question. It's been the bottom line. Miami with double the total offense today, even more than double of the Indianapolis Colts, as Mike Pagel gets set to throw on first down. Long ball. Wayne Tapers wide open. He has it. A foot race with Blackwood. But Brown now comes in. He can't get him. Two men fall to the ground. Wayne Tapers coming back. We'll take it the distance. It is a touchdown for the Colts. An 80-yard play. The biggest single play of the Indianapolis season. A 
this was a blown coverage by the Miami Dolphins. You can see the cornerback out there for the Miami Dolphins. 44. Langford lets him get by. The safety's supposed to rotate out Blackwood and keep him from catching that ball. Watch his move. Oh, there's one move. They got more coming. There's Brown. There's two moves. And a big block. Right here to help him. Oliver Williams just gets his hand on him. He wiggles into the end zone, 80 yards, and the Colts are back in it. Right back in it. Here's Allegra hitting the extra point, and all of a sudden they've ignited the crowd at the Hoosier Dome. 2.59 to play in the third quarter. An 80-yard touchdown play. A tremendous run by Wayne Capers, who was a number two draft choice of the Pittsburgh Steelers, and they cut him. But he's come in to make some big plays for the Colts, and that was his biggest as a professional. Just his 16th catch of the year. Uh -huh. He knows how to spike it. He learned somewhere either doing it or watching somebody doing it. That's the longest pass reception for a touchdown against the Miami Dolphins this year. And the longest pass play for the Colts since 1975. 90 yards, Burt Jones to Roger Carr. A decade ago. Two minutes and 59 seconds to play in the third quarter. You notice when he went in there, they booed him. When he came out, they cheered him, the fans. And I said they were going to be conservative. Yeah, all right. That's why I'm up here, and Rod Dauhauer is down there. Five of 15. Allegre hits the kickoff downfield. Lorenzo Hampton, who's been in the end zone twice, takes it up the middle, and the Colts sweep him under at the 23-yard line. So Dan Marino and the Dolphin offense, when seemingly they had the game in hand with a 14-point lead, all of a sudden, see the Colts come right back on one play and get the end zone, an 80-yard touchdown pass play. Marino and the Dolphins will be out firing again. He likes to get it in a hurry. Yeah, I noticed something about Don Shula. Obviously, he's running the same offense he's run in Miami since the late 60s. You see Tom Landry and Rod Dauhauer and Sam Weich and a lot of other coaches on the sideline with big, long lists of plays. You see nothing in Don Shula's hands. Absolutely nothing. It's all upstairs. He also doesn't wear a headset. Yeah, true. Marino lets her fly. Duper comes back at the ball, and he might have a first down. Mark Duper went right down to the marker. He'll be uh, about a half yard shy of the first down but it brings up second and less than a yard he looks healthy Don last week saying he was 85 maybe 65 percent healthy number 85 today cut very strong on his legs I thought the AstroTurf might affect the way he plays he showed no signs of a broken leg at all he's totally recovered in my estimation 80 percent recovered last week caught eight for 217 yards and two touchdowns for the yard for the first down for the Dolphins to lead by seven late in the third quarter. It'll be third and short. Wayne Bickett covering Tony Nathan. Excellent coverage by the Colts, too. They had no wide receivers to throw it to. Bickett's been a busy man out there. there are a lot of people in Indianapolis who question the choice of Bickett, Bickett as a first-round pick for the Indianapolis Colts. Dauhauer said, look. Try to find those people now. Yeah. He said, look, we're building this franchise for the future, not for next week or next month. Bickett's an excellent choice. He can play. Dolphins have only converted three of nine previous first to third down tries, but this one very short yardage, less than a yard. I set in the backfield. Lorenzo Hampton to beat back, and he gets the ball. And he gets the first down for Miami as he's out to the 36-yard line. Barry Krause made the stop, but the Dolphins get four new downs. 84, Bruce Hardy, the tight end of the Miami Dolphins, came in motion near side of the field. As you look at the defensive line of the Dolphins resting, Hardy made a good trap block on the defensive end. Hampton right up underneath it for a first down pickup. Indianapolis Colts have not defeated the Dolphins in the last 10 tries. In fact, Miami's beaten the Colts 15 of the last 16 meetings. They, of course, play twice a year, positioned in the AFC East. This is Don Crickey with Bob Trumpy as Miami with a seven-point lead in the third quarter goes to the run. Woody Bennett thunders ahead. Good blocking up front again from the Dolphins. 
Roy Foster out in front of the play. Bickett made the tackle. An excellent block on Bickett by Hampton. Watch what happens here. You see Hampton come out to him? Gives him a pretty good rock. Although Bickett throws him away. You know, the similarity between Bickett for Indianapolis and what the Miami Dolphins tried to do with Kim Bocamper when he first came into the league. Big outside linebackers. Both about 6'5", both about 250. Right now, those big backers dig in. Coming up close as it's second down and about three and a half. Moreno looks at four people run deep groups and guns it over the middle. Mark Cooper has oh. the ball, takes the hit, pays the price, but holds on. It's a first down for Miami at the 42-yard line of the Colts. Glasgow absolutely nailed it. And Cooper hasn't gotten up yet. He got hit right on the thigh, Don. A 15-yard reception. He was looking upfield. Now watch what happens. You can see Duper looking right straight at us. He's looking upfield to try to make more yards out of it. Once he catches the football, turns his head. I don't think, oh, that's a shot right in the thigh. Glasgow is a hitter, isn't he? Was there. Mark Duper, of course, missed eight weeks with a cracked bone in his leg. That was a shot on his thigh, so he's up and all right, having a good day again. Don, I've actually seen in some instances there's a huge fiberglass thigh board that fits, form fits around a player's thigh. And I've actually seen that board flip inside out, which you can't do with a sledgehammer, but there's enough impact from a helmet to just stop you dead in your tracks. A lot better than having your quadriceps flipped inside out. Yeah, boy, tonight flying back to Miami, he'll feel that. Those hurt. Atlanta leads the Rams 23 0 third quarter. Pittsburgh leads Houston 23 7 third quarter. Marino play faking again freezes the backers. There's another strike to Hardy. The big tight end takes it down to the 21 yard line. Dwayne Bickett made the tackle, but way downfield, a 20 yard gain. Another Dolphin first down. They have certainly beat that defense like a drum. And watch the play fake. Watch 55 Krause. You see his step laterally? That that does it right there. As soon as he steps lateral, you'll see 55 trying to catch up with 84. No chance. That little bit of a play fake just puts enough distance between the tight end and the linebacker in coverage so that the reception counts. 20 yards on the catch. 304 yards in a day passing for Dan Marino, and that is through three quarters of play. The gun sounds. We're set to go to the fourth quarter with the Dolphins leading the Colts 27 to 20. We'll be back to the Hoosier Dome right after this. Great chance to, great chance to see what happens. Kraus must first check run with the lineman pulling that he thinks run. When he steps sideways, Hardy's by him. All Marino has to do now is get the ball to Hardy and it's a completion. He did. Now Lorenzo Hampton goes in on the fly to the into the Colt defense, and he's down close to the 17-yard line. That was a first down carry. Through three quarters, you see the dominance of the Dolphins in total offense, 384 to 235. And they've also had much more time of possession. Those are net yards, aren't they? Passing yards are net yards. That's minus one sack. He's over 300 yards again in gross yards passing. Marino, I mean. There are the numbers, second and seven from the 17. Miami leading early in the fourth quarter, 7 0. Marino looks into the end zone, and there it goes. And it's a touchdown for Miami. Ron Davenport, who went in on that disputed punch in from a less than a yard out, shows his good hands, taking the ball on a, just a straight pattern to the goal post. And Marino, who throws rockets down close, puts it in for the touchdown. Now Cliff Odom was the man in coverage. The Miami Dolphins took a while, but they figured out how they can get linebacker coverage on tight ends and running backs. Odom 93 behind Davenport. Running backs are supposed to win that match, especially down at the goal line. Duper and Clayton have served as great decoys today. The inside guys have done most of the work. We saw a lot of defense through the first quarter and a half. Now all of a sudden it's opening up, and here is the extra point up and good by Reves. 14-18 left to play in the game, and the Dolphins again have a 14-point lead, 34-20. We'll be back with Miami's kickoff after this. Dan Marino do it again. It wasn't that long ago. The Colts had an 80-yard touchdown pass play. Now front, they need another one. Yeah. And, Donna, I must harken back to that last pass to Hardy down the middle. Watch, watch again how difficult it is to play linebacker. Line going two different directions. You see the running back, Woody Bennett, faking there. Marino holds the linebacker at the line of scrimmage. And now Hardy's down there. 
and watch Krause, the linebacker, five yards underneath him to try to make the tackle. That is a great illustration of play action passing. Now the kickoff as we go to live action. Allegre hits it downfield and Albert Bentley from his seven yard line. Hard run and Albert Bentley takes it across the 30 and he gets to the 35 yard line. 28 yard return and the Colts offense comes out. They'll be looking to put it up to get back in the game as the Dolphins make it happen fast. 77 yards on eight plays. Marino now 21 of 36, 321 yards and a touchdown just another day at the office for Dan Marino. Fourteen oh eight to play in the game as the Colts break the huddle. Pagel's gone the distance at quarterback. Dad Howard's not at all shy about changing quarterbacks if need be and they both understand that as Randy McMillan turns the corner gets out of bounds at the thirty seven. Today's game is brought to you by the astonishingly simple... Uh, Ruffy, the Indianapolis Colts have the ball, and they trail by 14 early in the fourth quarter. Hagel again will lose the rush, but not for long. Enough to stick him with Hugh Green. That's the second time they've sacked Mike Hagel today. Mike Charles was also on the play. That was a uh, coverage sack. Hagel had nobody to throw it to, and the coverage was just better than the pass protection, and therefore... His uh, choice was to take the sack. Third down and 12 coming up now. The ball at the 33-yard line. Mike Pagel sets his team. Colts having problems on third down. One for six converting them. Two wide receivers set to the top of your screen. It's Oliver Williams in motion. He hasn't caught a ball today. Pagel's looking at him. Now he throws. It's the wrong side of Wayne Caper. Yeah, the shorter pattern. Chip at the line of scrimmage. Looked like Hugh Green got his hand up. And Capers was open, too. One of the things that you can do, if you can't get to the quarterback, at least when you approach his face, just get your hands up in the air. And that's what Hugh Green did, knock the ball away. Both are warming up on the sideline, but then he's always warming up on yeah, the sideline. Warming up all day, really. Yes, he has. Ron Stark in to punt the ball now for the Colts, and back deep is Tommy Vigorito for Miami. End over end punt. Vigorito will return it from his 23. Shifty runner turns the corner, and Vigorito with a good return gets up the far side of the field, now to the 43, but there's going to be a penalty marker. After a 17-yard punt returned by Tommy Vigorito, a 44-yard punt by Ron Stark of the Colts. Face mask, five-yard penalty, number 32 on the return. So they got the Colts on a face mask call, and an additional five yards will be tacked on, and the Dolphins will go from outside their own 45-yard line. Matt Kofler, when the Indianapolis Colts get the ball back, will probably be the quarterback. He's uh, already thrown the ball 100 times today on the sideline. Whoa, the Jets beating up on Tampa Bay. Well, there's a history to that game. A season ago, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers were way up on the Jets in the fourth quarter and trying to get the all-purpose yards record for James Wilder. And they did what the Jets felt were some cheap tricks to get the ball back and embarrass them. The black... <laughs> New Year's Eve outfit. <laughs> I'll get you for that. Right now, it is first down and 10 for the Dolphins. If they get the ball back after the punt returned by Vigorito, the give goes, and running with the ball is Davenport. Last time he touched the ball, he was in the end zone, you remember, with it for a touchdown. I'll tell you one thing, this kid certainly makes 300 yards passing look very easy, doesn't he? Very it easy. Happens fast. Nothing to it. And he started You're off. And he gets it there. He checks everybody out and then zing. Kopler has a good arm. He's a strong thrower. Hagel out of Arizona State. Kopler's from San Diego State. Now 
Dolphins might start to put it on the ground now to run the clock some in the fourth quarter. They go straight ahead. Woody Bennett takes it down inside the Indianapolis 45-yard line. Whiten starts up with Eugene Daniel. Well, that happens when you've got 34 and your opponent's got 20. Temper seemed to flare a little bit. Cardinals starting to come back. St. Louis obviously missing the input of the man who was their offensive coordinator, Rod Dahauer, now the head coach of Indianapolis. Eric Dickerson just ran for a touchdown. The Rams have their first score of the day, a one-yard run. Haven't the Rams lost two in a row? This could be three. They were beaten by the Giants. I think, I think they were beaten by the 49ers early in the were year. Were they? Lost to the Giants last week. This will be a second loss in a row. Keep the 49ers in the chase, although they're five and five, and Los Angeles started the day at eight and two. What do you do here? Fourth down and just a couple of inches. Double header day on NBC Sports is Don Shula and the Dolphins decide, and the play comes in. Cincinnati and the Raiders at Los Angeles. The Patriots play at Seattle. San Diego goes against the Broncos at Denver. Kansas City at San Francisco. An array of good games. Check your local listing for the one that'll be your way as an NBC Sports doubleheader. Right now, third and inches. Yeah, let me correct myself. Not fourth down, third down and inches. Woody Bennett might get it, number 34. Make to Bennett and a handoff to Hampton, and he breaks it for a good game. Again, the depth, here's a free ball, though. Looks like the Colts have it. It's theirs. Another fine fake by Marino. Held everybody with a fake to Bennett, and then gave it. Hampton broke a good run. But the ball is coughed up to the dismay of Coach Shula. Cliff Odom comes up with the football, and the Colts have it back. That's the 12th fumble the Colts have lost. This is... A modern-day Statue of Liberty play. Misdirection all the way. See who makes the contact. Looks like Barry Krause has his arm around him. Put him right there to pick up the football. Can't really see who drags it out of his arm. Is it uh, Thompson? Can't really tell, but the ball is loose, and I think that's a good call by the officials. Indianapolis ball. First down and 10 now for the Colts, the ball positioned at their 26-yard line. They trail in the game, 34 to 20. The game clock shows 11.39 to play. Going for Randy McMillan, it carries off his pad with a little help from linebacker Hugh Green. So it'll be second down and 10 now for the Colts. Bagel still in the ball game. That's the wide receiver here, Oliver Williams. He falls down. He's the primary receiver. And it trips and so does the defensive back for the Miami Dolphins, William Judson. Oliver Williams has made some stops. This is his sixth pro team since leaving the University of Illinois. And with the Bears and the now defunct Chicago Blitz, <laughs> with the Cardinals and the Outlaws, the San Antonio Gunslingers, who I think are defunct, and now with the Colts. Second down and 10, Indianapolis, 11.33 to play in the game, and the Colts trail by 14. This guy moves quick when he sprints out Pagel. Bob Rudzinski, big Buckeye from Ohio State, went up and slapped it back. You mentioned Oliver Williams. His brother at the University of Illinois is considered oh, one, of the, David? one of the prime receiving prospects coming out of the draft this year. The last time they booed Pagel, before a play, they cheered him after an 80-yard touchdown that played a Wayne Capers. Five of 18 today, 133 yards, a touchdown and an interception. He came into the ball game today completing less than 50% of his passes. Actually, they've intercepted him twice. Yeah, one touchdown, two interceptions. And wow. five of 18. Bears have extended their lead now. They lead 27-0 over Dallas. So much for a big game in Irving, Texas. Rolling out, Pagel goes to the left side. And deftly darts out of bounds before they can stick him. Now that, that's a good idea, rolling out to avoid the pass rush. But, Don, I'll tell you what it does is it only gives you a third of the field to throw to. And that's the, the third of the field that you're rolling to. You can't throw the ball late back down the middle. So all you can do is just throw to those receivers that are right on the sideline. Well, there's a big plus getting away at the pass rush, also a big minus. 
Ron Stark ready to punt the ball again with 11.20 left to play in the game. Standing back at his 15-yard line. Vigorita, who you'll remember, returned the last one 17 yards. Then there was five yards tacked on for a face mask to get the Dolphins in good position again. Standing back. The Dolphins didn't score on that drive, though, because of the fumble. And now it goes to a short man in Glenn Blackwood, who's up to block. Fair catches the ball after a 43-yard punt. So the high-power Miami Dolphin offense with the engine. Dan Marino at the controls comes back out when we return. The Dolphins have the ball, and they lead the game 34 to 20. Any of you have held on to your partridge meat? Football cards. I want to know that a Trumpy card is worth $10 on the open market. That's from a card collector's catalog. It has to be in mint condition, though. You probably have a seller full of them. That's a misprint. I think they're worth a dollar. Amos was worth 120. Handoff goes up the middle to Lorenzo Hampton, and he takes the ball across the 30. Good gain. He's a quick back, Lorenzo Hampton. Not that big. Six feet, about 208. Very shifty runner. Came in averaging 3 8 a carry. Getting a lot more work as the season goes on. Don Shula showing his confidence in the two rookies, Davenport and Hampton. This is a good day rushing for the Miami Dolphins. Coming into this ball game, Freeman McNeil by himself had outrushed the entire Miami Dolphins football team. Keep him healthy and the Jets could go the distance. He goes down and he has every year. The Jets have come a cropper. Lorenzo Hampton goes over the top. That was on a second down and three carry. He'll be short of a first down. Dwayne Bickett got him as the Miami offense gets conservative now. Ten minutes and 20 seconds to play in the game in Miami with a 14-point lead. One of the interesting matchups was Dwight Stevenson on the nose tackle. Brad White of the Indianapolis Colts. That time White did an outstanding job, but I think he's got muscle cramps in the backs of his legs. You get him standing up like that and they can't straighten out their toes you know they're having cramp problems it's warm in the Hoosier Dome today it really is probably about 50 outside but it's much warmer than it inside as now Marino hands off and they go to the power run on third and short two yards needed for the first down Donnell Thompson made the stop on Ron Davenport and it looks like Ron Haggerty the Pat Haggerty the referee is going to call a timeout to measure Scheduling surely favors the Dolphins the rest of the way in the regular season. Next week they go to Buffalo, where over the years they've been able to phone it in. <laughs> then it gets tough, though. They got Shame the Bears. You. They go back to the Orange Bowl to play the Chicago Bears. That's the way it looks. Then they go to Green Bay. That won't be a day at the beach in December. New England's no slouch no, anymore, either. Monday night games will be there for NBC Radio for those. And they close out against Buffalo, a team that was old for the 70s against Miami. Never beat the Dolphins, even though they played twice a year in the entire decade of the 70s. Lorenzo Hampton runs on first down and gets out to the 43-yard line. Johnny Cooks made the knockdown. John, I'll tell you, when you're looking at factors for the remainder of the season for the Miami Dolphins, I repeat, one of the most important factors, critical factors, is that all of their free moves to bring people from the injured reserve important. to the active roster are gone. They got Cleveland Green now with the badly sprained ankle. They're basically going to have to go with the 45 guys they've got here or bring in somebody, somebody brand new who hasn't played in the last several weeks. They're stuck. But they're going much better right now. Looking for their seventh win of the year. Miami coming in with a 6-4 and four record. One game off the lead in their division. Look at Lorenzo Hampton accelerate. He gets out to midfield for a first down carry on a second down and six. Backup linebacker Orlando Lowry knocked him down. Hampton getting a lot of work and responding. Coming into this ball game, the Jet, uh, the Miami Dolphin with the most rushes in a football game was Tony Nathan, 14 carries. Now Hampton, his 15th carry of the day there for 63 yards and two touchdowns. Nathan resting. Durable Tony Nathan for seven years. He's missed very few games. Very, very fine player, and he was the leading receiver coming into the game. 48 catches. Now as the Dolphins come to the near side on that power sweep. That's on Jensen. Marker comes in. That's on Jensen. Jensen was trying to block Dwayne Bickett and grabbed the hold of his arm. Not what Crash wanted, but it gets him on the air. Yeah, well, there's Mr. Green resting comfortably on the sideline, sprained ankle. Good player. Boy, he's come on for Miami. Yes, Cleveland he has. Green. I bet the ranch. This is on Crash Jensen. There he is. 
Neck collar and all. <laughs> Coach. Don, uh, I think Don Shula realizes, hey, Craig. Holding number 11, offense, still first down. The ranch is mine. That wasn't a benevolent word, I don't think, the coach had for crash. Well, from what I understand, Don can do that to you. He can, yeah, this uh, guy really helps the Dolphins, though, Jensen. He can play quarterback, defensive back, linebacker, tight end, wide receiver. He's an excellent special teams player. He can punt. Tool. Crescent wrench. He can do them all at once. Adjust to any job on the field. <laughs> you need one of those. He saves a lot of roster positions to back up at five different players' positions. Now with 7.35 to play, Dan Marino goes to the run again. Hampton doesn't get anything, but on first down, the Dolphins aren't that concerned as they continue to run the clock. Wayne Bickett filling and making the stop for the Colts. Tell you what, this kid is quick enough at his size that one, it takes recognition, but the minute those offensive line uh, linemen of the Miami Dolphins pulled away from him, bam, he was down the line of scrimmage to make the tackle. Now, you mentioned Crash Jensen and his uh, role as a utility player. Upset Don Shula to no end to have a guy who was not a starter hold out. He didn't like that at all. Crash is trying to make up for it, I believe, this season. Just trying to get a fair share. 6.50 to play. The Dolphins lead the game 34 to 20. Dan Marino stands into the last second. Look at that jump off to Tony Nathan in open field. He oh. lost it. Gary Krause comes up with the ball, and Indianapolis has it at the Colt 43 yard line. So the Colts are still in it with 6.39 to play. Second ball tossed up by the Miami Dolphins running backs today. Nagel remains in the ball game. Watch the way Danny throws this ball. He's going to throw it somewhere that brings it back. Nathan normally pretty sure-handed. Good hit by Glasgow, who has been all over this field, making severe contact. Just ask Mark yeah, Nesby's Duper. a hitter. Nesby's a good player. Nesby Glasgow in his sixth year from Washington. A strong safety. 5'9", about 195. He hits like a cannon. And Krause recovered. Don McNeil now in a cornerback, Don. Belts right him, the best cover, one of the best covers in pro football. He's running stride for stride with Capers as Cagle has no place to go. And again, as you referred to it, the coverage sack. Nobody to throw to, and down goes the QB. The third sack of the day by the Dolphins of Mike Cagle. George Little. And they go right back to the line of scrimmage, Don. Tough play, second down and 16. Hagel's got a lot of room to run. Hardly bailed out, although just short of a first down. It'll bring up third down and about two. I'm not sure what they're doing for. I think they wanted him to put his head down and get the first oh. down. Oh, I see. They wanted to the next see a picture of him in the hospital? Well, okay. I don't blame Pagel for disagreeing. Shula doesn't look like he's thrilled with this whole effort today. No, I think he's settling for, uh, he's setting up for the playoffs and the latter stages of this season. They've allowed that punt returned against him for a touchdown. Talked up the ball a couple of times. Missed a couple of opportunities. And he is a football perfectionist. Yeah, his son, Mike Shula, can flank that thing. Well, he's yes, doing he good can. work for the Tide. Got him from behind again yesterday. Mike Pagel has now run the ball four times for 34 yards. Third down and two. Mike Shula, the quarterback of Alabama. Here's Pagel on the sprint out. Throws the ball. And McMillan steps out of bounds. It's about the... 46-yard line. He does get a first down. Good job, too. Joe Robbie, the president of the Dolphins, a couple of booths away, is ready to break ground with the whole Dolphin family. That big new stadium they're going to put up. Won't seem the same, though, not to go to the Orange Bowl. Uh, I will have no complaints. Isn't the uh, Robbie family pretty much Joe? Well, he runs it, I think. Yes, I, I think he's the main stockholder. I do believe he is. Be great to go to the Orange Bowl, though, on New Year's Day night, January 1st, 1986, where the Orange Bowl committee is getting set, quite possibly, to put together another national championship game in college football, and NBC Sports will be there. Mike Pago rolls out, turns the corner, throws, and Capers catches it. Nicely done by the Indianapolis Colts as they get down inside the Miami 40. William Judson on the coverage. He did not get out of bounds, so they got to go right back to the line of scrimmage. Don, very telling statistics here. Miami, 13 first downs in the second half to Indianapolis' three. They get four. 
Raymond Butler's had a hard time holding on today, diving at the 25-yard line. That stops the clock with 5.47 to play. They've come close on a lot of these plays. Had several drops, Bagel has. And this one's flown, thrown slightly low. But I think this is a very catchable pass, don't you? That's at the waist. I know I would have had it. <laughs> really? Yeah, but could you have gotten open? That's the most important thing. I still have four years of college eligibility. And no one is offered to take you up on those four years right. either, I notice. Correct. Third down and three right now as the ball is positioned at the 38-yard line of Miami. Dolphins in the lead, 34 to 20 in the fourth quarter. Mike Pagel against the blitz. They pick it up. He loops it out in a fine defensive play, moving in and knocked the ball down for the Dolphins with Mark Brown. Boy, he reached in there and got it just in time as Pagel. Very heady play, lobbed the ball to what appeared to be an open man, but then it was broken up. A delay run by the receiver, and you're right, Brown does an outstanding job of being right there at McMillan's side to knock it away. Watch this coverage. It's a delay inside, no contact, outstanding coverage by Brown. Well down. Got to go for it, trailing 34 to 20 with 5.43 to play at the Hoosier Dome in Indianapolis. Blocking's good, now the rush is on. There's a swing pass, Pat Beach has the ball. He has a first down to the 31-yard line of Miami. Pat Beach running underneath the zone coverage. The big tight end takes the ball and gets ahead. Alex Moyer knocked him down. Alex Moyer had coverage. Beach with the better speed, 30 to nothing. The Bears over Dallas in Dallas. That's the game of the year. There it is. I guarantee you they're uh, screaming for Hoga Boom down there. Screaming for more than Hoga Boom. That's without Jim McMahon at quarterback. Steve Fuller started, right? Yeah. Steve Fuller was was going to go the distance, at least at the outset. Now Mike Pago looping it long. Pat Beach fell down, but the ball is caught by Oliver Williams. He fumbles. It's recovered in the end zone. It might be a touchback. Come on, gentlemen, say something. What are they going to call? They're calling a touchback. Okay. Now, if he had broken the plane of the goal, still in possession, it would have been a touchdown. Then he can do anything he wants. So at that goal line, the Dolphins have no complaints. Yeah, they're saying that he did not have control when he went to the goal line. And the fumble recovery in the end zone, it comes out to the 20. Looks like he was looking at Beach, and Beach falls down. Oliver Williams comes over, gets the ball. Judson in coverage. One, two, that's a reception. Yeah, the ball was stripped. An excellent call. It was free. And the Miami Dolphins get it in the end zone. So the ball was stripped before he came down. It was a free ball, a reception, and a fumble. A Dolphin recovery in the end zone, a touchback. And Miami stops the Indianapolis Colts threat and takes over the ball. First and 10 on the Miami 20. Alex Moyer with the recovery. Yeah, I think that's a legitimate fumble recovery by the Miami Dolphins in the end zone. Good call officials. Now, Dan Marino sets his team in the running formation. The eye set. End up goes, and Woody Bennett takes it across the 20 and out to the 23-yard line as they run the game clock down to 440 and ticking. It was a shocker in the first quarter here as the Colts jumped out to a 10-0 lead. Seven of the points resulting on a punt return of 70 yards by Robbie Martin. Looks Half like time, they were tied 13-13. Excuse me, John. Looks like they're going to come in with the uh, big guys now. Two tight ends, two big, hefty running backs in Bennett and Davenport. Just hang on to the football here. Clayton alone. No, they got two wide receivers in there. Receivers, two tight ends. Handoff goes, and Ron Davenport takes the ball as the penalty marker comes down. Folks, this season, in their three and seven year to date, either seem to win big or lose big. Yeah, there's no question about it. This, this, this is a team that, at the end of the first half, they were right where they wanted to be, holding against the Miami Dolphins. Another penalty that'll drive Don Shula nuts. But that's that one that spot that allowed the Miami Dolphins a touchdown, which I still don't think was a touchdown by Hampton. And then the onside kick, bam. Shula took the uh, Colts right out of the game. In the three cold victories, the average margin has been 22 points. In the seven losses, the average margin of defeat has been 17 points. Holding number 60, offense. Lauren Taves of the Miami Dolphins. Been doing it for a long time for Miami. Holding or blocking? 
Huh? Watch the upper side of the screen. Dave's an excellent blocking offensive lineman. And of course, the all offensive linemen never want their names mentioned on television. Actually, that was Jeff Tate, Lauren, his brother, Excuse the longtime Steeler. Excuse me, yes. One of the brother acts in the NFL. Second down, as you see, 16 to go for the first down. Woody Bennett isn't going to cough it up. Two arms on the ball as he slants to the 21. Bring up third and long. Tell you what, I, yeah, timeout in Indianapolis. Good call. Well, we've also got a man down. This is a... That's Taves. Jeff Taves, yeah. Jeff Taves. Now, well, I can't emphasize enough the free move problem now of the Miami Dolphins. Newman's on the IR. He's holding the wrong spot, too. He's grabbing for his leg. Green on the sideline. This is a critical situation now. Yeah, he appears to be in a lot of pain. Jeff Taves with an injury to his left knee. So with the Chicago Bears now leading Dallas 30 to nothing in the fourth quarter. Here at Indianapolis, look at this. This is in the third quarter. Oh, they pointed on and John McKay isn't even there. NBA. Pittsburgh has begun to come on. Dealers lay in waste to Houston, a team that's gone into a sinking spell. Philadelphia holding a 10-point lead over St. Louis in the fourth quarter. Rams coming back, but it might be too late. Underdog Atlanta up 23 to 14. Cleveland rallying from a 7-3 halftime deficit now leads the Buffalo Bills 17-7. Browns had lost four in a row. Green Bay hitting hard on Bum Phillips and his New Orleans Saints, 31-7. This is how this game broke down. Colts scored the first 10 points of the game. It was tied at halftime. Miami then extended a lead to 14 in the third quarter, but on an 80-yard play after the Dolphins' last touchdown, it gave them a 14-point lead. The Colts hit on an 80-yard scoring play, a pass to Wayne Capers, and Miami came back to score again and again take a 14-point lead. Don, you, uh, we saw the picture of Jeff Taves going to the sideline. Uh, he's part of that offensive line that this season has allowed just 12 sacks. In 84, the Dolphins' offensive line allowed just 14 sacks. That's with all those attempts by Dan Marino in, in an 83, just 23 sacks. National Football League rules require that we present any away game starting with the opening kickoff to stations in the team's home area. So viewers in San Diego, Kansas City, and Boston will be leaving this game in a few minutes for a telecast involving your home team. However, we'll continue to bring reports on this game to keep you up to date. Don Steve Clark now in the ball game, replacing Jeff Taves at right guard. Clark, a fourth-year man from Utah. And right now, with 3.04 left to play and the Dolphins in the lead, Dan Marino goes back to the run and to Lorenzo Hampton. To the 21. Good D by big Johnny Cooks. It was the second player picked in the entire draft in 82 when he came out of Mississippi State. Lorenzo Hampton, the Dolphins' number one draft choice in 85 with his best day. Mm, how about that? Number of carries, too, up around 16, 17, which is a high water mark for the Dolphins in 1985. 17th carry, 61 yards, two touchdowns. Mr. Aroby in to punt. I believe the Colts have called a timeout. They have with 2.37 left to play and their dangerous punt return man, Robbie Martin, is on the field. Had a career return earlier, bringing one back in the first quarter, 70 yards for a touchdown against Miami. This will be the first punt, I believe, in the second half for big Reggie Roby. Yeah, you mentioned uh, the remaining schedule for the Miami Dolphins. The Colts have Kansas City there, New England here, at the Bears, at Tampa. And Houston here in the final game of the season, December 22nd. Right now, the Dolphins get set to punt the ball back. As you'll recall, the Colts were very close to a touchdown. Their last possession when Pagel hit Oliver Williams. But he was stripped of the ball at the three, lost it at the goal line. The Dolphins recovered for a touchback. The threat was stopped. Miami Dolphins, who have dominated the AFC East, they have either one or share the division title 12 of the previous 15 years that Don Shula has been coached there. I'll tell you another thing. You look at the AFC East and the number of coaches that the other teams in the AFC East have had while Don Shula has been the head coach. 
it is shocking. I would imagine it's close to 30 coaches at Buffalo, New York, New England, and, uh, and Indianapolis. Well, that was the war cry Miami a few years ago when the Big Three left for the then World Football League. The cry was they didn't get Shula, and the Dolphins yeah. rolled on. A lot of people have tried to get him, haven't they? Yeah. Could have had a condominium from Donald Trump on Fifth Avenue. But I'm not a condominium kind of a guy. Here's the <laughs> kick downfield. Reggie Roby hits it down to the 30, and here comes exciting Robbie Martin, but the excitement is lost quickly as the coverage is good on the special team. Bruce Hardy, the tight end, came down to make the play a five-yard return after Reggie Roby hit it 48 yards. Look at the number of head coaches that the other teams in the AFC East have had. That's 30 head coaches while Don Shula's been a head coach for the Miami Dolphins. You'd think some of these other franchises might catch on after a while. <laughs> right. The man said you go back to square one every time you change. I think the Colts, although en route to their eighth loss quite possibly, are on the right track with Dauhauer. This team has a good attitude. It's young. Matt Beach takes the ball ahead. He's close to a first down for Indianapolis. The Colts have 31 players on their roster with four years or less experience, 31 of the 45, and 21 of the players have been in the league for three years or less. A lot of new people as Hugh Green puts a hit on hard. Coming on the impeded on a linebacker blitz. Hey, well, Chicago Bears, right. they don't take any prisoners. No. <laughs> I wonder if the refrigerator has scored. He might have been in a few times. William Perry. He may go back to pass, a rollout, a screen pass. Cleveland Browns end their losing streak at four games. Their record now goes to five and six in the AFC Central. The Bills drop to two and nine. They go 10 of 26, now 190 yards, one touchdown, two interceptions. Throw downfield and a standout breakup up to break up the ball for the Miami Dolphins on the play with the backup linebacker Alex Moyer who's made a few big plays today. That's Number another 54. one. That That's was a, a real big one. Beach was open. Watch it. Really nice. We'll be back to Indianapolis after Jeff Taves right behind Dan Marino with a wrap around his knee. Very serious injury it appears. And also Cleveland Green another starting off and there's the Wrap on his knee, ice on his knee. And of course, in the first half, Cleveland Green went down with a sprained ankle. Looks very comfortable, hadn't he? He hadn't moved in the. Cleveland looks quarters. almost like a statue there. He isn't, yeah, he hasn't moved since he got hurt. Two minutes left to play in the game. The Indianapolis Colts have the ball at their 47 yard line. John Strock there with the jacket on and the helmet on. They like to put Marino in there, keep him in there as much as they possibly can. Miami today, 467 total yards. Indianapolis, 302, which is a good effort by the Miami Dolphins defense for this season. Two minutes left to play. Ball at the 47-yard line, and here's Pagel to throw. He connects. Coming up with the ball is Mark Boyer of the Indianapolis Colts. Taves going off to the locker room. No sense sitting here for the last two minutes. Get it elevated. Get ice on it. Down to the go. That's Wayne Capers. Previous catch today uh, before that one was that one that went for 80 yards as he put on a career series of moves weaving his way down. The kicking trust to the Miami Dolphins. Their job well done. Reveille to the left and Roby to the right. Wad remissed uh, his uh, first field goal of the season. By Inside the, way, the 50, yeah. yeah. By the way, you know what Wad stands for in Arabic? Fred. Okay. Sounds more impressive as Wad, doesn't it? He was actually, how can he be an Arabian? He was born in Bogota, Colombia. Well, that, that's what uh, oh. someone from the Miami Dolphins told me. Maybe it's. Whatever he is, he's a player. And it means Fred. And he can play. You know, they used to have the kicker down in Miami, Gary Yaprimian. He'd kick off and would be off the field in about 1.2 seconds. He would head right for the sideline. This guy comes down and destroys people. He was a high school linebacker, as we pointed out, in Miami. Well, he says his I parents are going crazy traveling all over the country to see the Reves brothers punt. He's got another brother who's a very good uh, kick, good place kicker at a small college. 
The other brother is a uh, place kicker, Carlos of Tennessee, the number one rated place kicker in NCAA record books this year. Mark Duper at his leisure now. How are you, Mark? Comment on Darryl Euphemian. I think he was ordered to be off the field in 1.2 yeah. seconds by Don Shula. Moreno has thrown for 330 yards today, 22 of 37. Indy's total yards, 302. It's a graphic update. Looks like the Jets are going to go to 8 and 3, the Dolphins to 7 and 4. New England with a tough game later, part of the NBC Sports Doubleheader Day. They'll be playing at Seattle. McMillan takes the ball straight ahead for the Colts with 125 to play and running. He gets it down to the 32-yard line of Miami. George Little was on the stop as Mike Pagel looks deep. Miami in his zone. There's only a swing pass left. McMillan gets out of bounds, but he does get a first down. I like this kid. He's an outstanding player. Catches the ball well, blocks, and certainly carries it. Some of the matchups coming up. Check your local listing. The Bengals and the Raiders play at Los Angeles. The Patriots at Seattle. San Diego, a rising club at Denver. Broncos coming off a big win. Kansas City plays at San Francisco. 49ers are on the ropes right now. The yeah. defending champions. San Francisco playing Denver for the second time in three weeks. The throw is Pagel open in the end zone. Wayne Capers and Don McNeil broke it up. Well, it was there. That was touchdown. How many times today have we seen have we seen passes just that close to being received by the Indianapolis Colts, knocked away by a defensive back or a linebacker? This is as good a defensive performance, I believe, as the Dolphins have had this season. McNeil, who has been troubled by injuries all of his career, has been a standout when he's been healthy for Miami, as he was in that play. Former number one draft choice out of Alabama. Wow. <laughs> Chicago Bears taking no prisoners, 44 to nothing over the Cowboys. Here's a handoff up the middle. Running with the ball down to the 17-yard line is McMillan as the game clock ticks down to a minute to play. Glenn Blackwood makes the stop. Get this, the last time the Dallas Cowboys were shut out, 1970, the Cardinals beat them 48 to nothing. Incomplete with 47 seconds left. Well, they've eclipsed that, now have the Bears. Everybody's gotten into the act. Their first touchdown was scored by a defensive end on an interception return, Richard Dent. Fuller ran for a touchdown. Butler's kick three field goals. Calvin Thomas ran for a touchdown. Dennis Gentry ran for a touchdown. Mike Richardson ran an interception back for a Chicago touchdown. Going every way you can. Where's William Perry? I don't see his name mentioned there. He, he, was, was, he was blocking. He was blocking, okay. 47 seconds left to go at Indianapolis in the Hoosier Dome where the Miami Dolphins are about to extend their record on the season to 7-4. and four. Right back in the race, they'll trail the Jets by one game at day's end. If the Jets' big lead is maintained over the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, they're playing now at Giant Stadium. The Jets have a 27-point lead. Hagel fires for the end zone, coming back at the ball, but catching it out of bounds is Oliver Williams. I thought he had it. Looked like he did. I thought he still had his feet inbounds and made the reception. I thought he did exactly as your receiver coach would tell you to do. Watch the end of this play. Judson in coverage. He looks back. and Now watch when Judson looks back. Then Williams pushes off a little bit. That's a good catch. I'd give him that one. Real good catch. Great second look. Producer today for NBC Sports, Glenn Adamo. Our director is John Gonzalez. As Mike Pagel's numbers are on the board, the two interceptions were expensive. But overall, he quarterbacked a good game for this young team. Right now, he's trying to get him in the end zone one more time. This is a third down and 10. Free ball. It's caught. Free ball. Dolphins have it. Another touchback. That's twice. Yep. We saw a collision. We're going to see that again. Owen Gill, a rookie running back from Iowa, catches the ball, loses the ball. He gets the free ball in midair. Actually, I'm not sure he ever really had possession of that football now that I look at it again, Don. That slipped right Here's around Gill's body. This hit. The ball is hit by Blackwood up in the air. 
Now, now watch if Gill really has hold of this football. Yeah, I think he did. Well, I think he did. Yeah, that's the second time the ball has been turned loose by Indianapolis in their end zone recovered by the Miami Dolphins. And if those two plays went just a little bit different, this game could be going to overtime. But as it is, the turnovers have been expensive for Indianapolis, and the Colts trail by 14 as the Dolphins are set to run the clock out and make this game history. 11 straight wins for the Miami Dolphins over the Colts. Another day at the office. Nothing to it. And he sat on the ball in the fourth quarter. He's yep. done a lot of running or he's run his back. First, when you got Clayton and Duper, you can run the ball after they catch it. It's not that difficult to accumulate 300 yards in a hurry. But I'll tell you one thing. One thing I've always liked about Miami is they find a way, they find what you're doing and figure out a way to get to it. They started outside, and they weren't having much luck thrown to the wide receivers. They started going to the tight ends up the middle, and we've seen several big plays to the tight ends up the middle. They beat the zone down here on the big reception by Clayton, I believe it was, and the turnovers by the Indianapolis Colts. Two fumbles in the end zone recovered by Miami. And Chip Myers and Rod Dahauer go back to the drawing board. Chip, for, a teammate of yours. Yeah. Coached in Tampa Bay for a number of years. Coached for Mike White at the University of Illinois. Well, I'll tell you one thing. These young players like this coaching staff at Indianapolis. I was talking to Piglet some length. He said the players know there's a future here, that this is gonna, team is going to be getting better and better at the young team. The big difference over a season ago when Frank Cush was the coach, it was a hard line football approach. Hagel said the difference is negatives were stressed then. Rod Dahar preaches, preaches the positive and we're going to get better. They were for a while today. They were right in the game with the favored Dolphins, but now it's history. 14 seconds tick off, and that will do it for. Bob Trumpy, this is Don Cricky, the final number at the Hoosier Dome in Indianapolis. The Indianapolis Colts losing to Miami, 34 to 20. Coach Don Shula's team ups its record now to seven and four. Rod Dauhauer's falls to three and eight. As sportsmen both, they exchange pleasantries, and that is it. It's a doubleheader day, though, on NBC Sports. Stay with us. <laughs>